actually sitting on the string deck. Gives me the big old fat finger saying go away. So basically I'm not I won't be able to shout out anybody, but I was able to flip through all my other stuff, but well, we'll get that later. Let's get this party started. To tonight's episode of Agora Quest 21 Shots. I am Sean, your host. Sorry that we got started a couple minutes late to kicking off there. I was I'm having still having an issue a little bit with my stream deck. Not sure what's going on. Every button works except for uh like if I want to do a shout out or um if uh, I have a separate button that I can do shout outs for a raider. So if somebody raids into our stream, I can just hit the raider and then I can find who raided us and it'll do a special shout out as a raider. But every button on there is working except these two I reached. And that's why we start a little late. Cause I was, I always kick off like 10 minutes early, give or take. And for whatever reason, uh, my buttons weren't working. So I stopped streaming and then we kicked it back off, but that's okay. Everything else is working. I just weird that those two specific command buttons are not working, but welcome, 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 welcome. If you are new here, welcome. If you are an old hat, welcome back. So I see some folks started to get here a little bit early, which is always good because the seat in the, the arena does tend to fill up relatively quickly. So it's good that you get here early, get yourself something to drink, a little snack on your favorite food, whatever it may be, and then join us for our episode on what we affectionately like to call our shit show. So... For the first time in a long time, we've got almost everybody in the party. We don't have two, three, four, five people missing, man. We've only got Monkey missing tonight. And uh, really, that's not saying too much, right? Because Monkey is more along the lines of what when it's his turn, he will jump in there and, and do what he needs to do. But other than that, we spend half of our stream trying to get Monkey's attention and let him know that it's his turn. But it's all good fun. He uh, He has work to do. Totally okay. 
Um, so we, we are allowed to pick on him mercilessly whilst he is gone. So who knows? Maybe he'll show up later. Galaxy, good to, uh, to have you back, man. Hopefully the robotics thing went well. If you didn't win first place, then you suck. Just saying. We were uh, actually ranked like 57th <laughs> out of 62. Oh, well, see, so. there you go. You're not last. You're not last. Yeah, I don't. We I don't last. care what. I don't care what Ricky Bobby says, man. If you're not last, you're not last. So we're good. But yeah. So again, if you're new here, welcome. We are a D and D stream tonight. Is our first edition, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, um, based in the world of Greyhawk. Uh, if you're not an old grognard like myself and some of the others that that play, um, we do a fifth edition stream every other Friday. Yeah, you just missed us this past Friday. Or maybe you didn't. Maybe you're here and because of the fact that we did our 5e stream on Friday. But this coming Friday is our off week, and you can catch us Friday after that. Yes, <clears throat> Friday after that. I'm trying to keep my schedules straight in my head. I got a trip coming up here, and I'm trying to remember if it overlaps on other days. But no, we will be back not this coming Friday, but the following Friday um, post Easter. So um, again, if you're in the fifth edition stuff, Come check us out. Uh, if you uh, if you follow Twitch at all, you've been on Twitch at all, you know, as you watch streams, you tend to earn tokens associated with that particular stream. Uh, for us, you can trade those tokens in. You can grant your favorite player or party or humble DM, as the case may be, a nat 1 or a nat 20. Um, they have to have it on hand, so I encourage you, if you have the tokens, to get them in early and often because late in the game, if you give them... Uh, nat ones and nat 20s and they never end up using them potentially they could go away by next stream because typically i only want them for the stream that you donate them um but there have been cases where i allow it to carry over just because of the situation but as of right now <clears throat> we don't have anybody with nat ones or nat 20s on hand so you guys got the tokens and you're willing to spend the money um go ahead and drop those uh drop those on us right now just let us know in chat who it is for, if it's a particular character, the DM for the party in general, whatever the case may be, totally fine. Uh, if you would like to help support the stream as well as the players, you uh, for every 200 bits that you cheer, you can give a, uh, is it 200 did I say or is it 100? I always forget. Let me double check my notes. 100 bits, sorry. For every 100 bits that you cheer, it's 200 bits in my 5th edition game for advantage, but for Every 100 bits that you cheer in this game, you can give a plus one to a player or the DM. Now, those do carry over stream to stream because if you're going to spend your hard-earned cash, i.e. a dollar, giving our players a bonus on their character sheet, um, then I'm going to allow that to carry over from stream to stream to stream. And as we stand right now, your humble DM has a plus four available for his use. So, Tal, you have a plus two. Deglin has a plus five. Baron, you have a plus two and a plus five. Uh, Ronnie, you have a plus one and a plus three. Varus has a plus two and a plus one. And Zadkiel, who is not here tonight, as I said, he has a plus one and a plus three. So as stated, you can only have up to a plus five in any batch of numbers that you get or or, to or advantage or whatever you want to call it that, that you are granted. Um, so, but you can't choose from two pools so if you need a plus six you cannot take five from one and one from another the max you can get at any one time is five and that five has to all come from the same pool so as i said if you want to help our players out um, i encourage you uh, during the game if you think they're going to need those additional bonus numbers um, and they can use that to, to do plus one to a roll or subtract off a roll depending upon what they need but the fact of the matter is that they have those numbers available to them um, also, if you want to help support stream, obviously, you know what to do. Click that follow button. Um, let your friends, family, coworkers know about us when we stream again, every Monday night, uh, on this, at this time and every other Friday night, uh, same time, just a, a different, uh, version of the game. So, uh, and last but not, well, and actually not really last, but next to last, um, you know, always looking for subscribers because of you guys and all the donations that we've had uh, over the past year and a half or two years or however long it's been we've been streaming i think it's about a little over a year um for every every little bit that you guys donate goes right back into the stream nothing's kept in pocket i don't go spend it on any uh whatever the case may be my wife gives me enough allowance that that i don't have to do that so 
Everything that we make goes right back into the stream, whether it's hosting the game platform, whether it's content, um, whether it's stuff for the stream itself, i.e. this stream deck was uh, because of a, a wonderful donation by one of our patrons out there. So uh, again, if you'd like to help support streaming that way, um, I definitely appreciate it. But at the bare minimum, the fact that you're here, we appreciate that. So that's that's really the main reason I wanted to do this is because I thought it's a cool way to meet people from all over the world. Um, and in fact, I already have. So it's it's actually we I, we're kind of international as a stream since now that we have a uh, a Canadian amongst us. So um, we appreciate uh, the recent addition of our very own Satal um, Olivier uh, joining our stream. Um, and now, last but not least, if you are a uh, fan of the world of Greyhawk, of which obviously we are, because all of my streaming that I do is in the world of Greyhawk, I encourage you to check out the Greyhawk Creatives team page on Twitch. So go to twitch.tv slash team slash Greyhawk Creatives. Uh, check us out. You can see several other streamers out there. Um, last I looked, there was like 20 different streamers that do uh, Greyhawk content. So I highly encourage you to check them out. Lord Gazumba. Matter of fact, just yesterday had the Roger Moore um, uh, on talking about D and D in general and and whatnot and stuff. Didn't get not get a, I did not get a chance to see the stream because I was out checking out the new D and D movie, which we'll talk about maybe at the end of tonight's stream um, in our after party. If you want to hang around and discuss that with us, it'd be great. Um, but yeah, he had Roger Moore on, uh, not too long ago or on several occasions. He's had Elminster himself, the man that created Forgotten Realms, um, uh, on his stream, not only as a player, but just as one of his gabbins and talking. So we got some power players in the world of Greyhawk. And, and so I encourage you to go check out all of those streamers and all the content that they provide, because there's a lot of really great stuff, not just game, you know, whether it's art, whether it's uh talking about uh, old school D D stuff whatever the case may be um i encourage you to check it out and if you're one of those people with a weird time zone like i don't know new zealand check out armin you know armin's over in new zealand so not only is this stream international but all of our greyhawk content's international too so i highly encourage you guys to check it all out and anyway welcome um, so let's talk a little bit about where we've been, where we're going, what's going on right here. Our party, um, for those that have been following, you know that they left the city of Gyrax and the dwarven communities behind to head to the free city of Greyhawk. And along the way, they got sucked into this, uh, ancient abandoned mansion, which was actually its own little demi plane of existence. It is now, they are now trapped inside this mansion called Chateau d'Amberville, or for those that don't speak French as fluently as I do, is uh, Castle Amber. Um, they have been searching for a way out because this, this chateau is completely encased in a deadly mist. And so the party has discovered that they need to find some keys and those keys will allow them or uh, at least unlock some way that they can exit uh, this place. Um, and so they investigated the West Wing. They investigated... Uh, what they what was the, the uh, central um, uh, like a forest like a, a, a central garden if you will overgrown and full of all kinds of weird stuff. Um, they went into a chapel and they encountered uh, some things within the chapel of the castle. And in the chapel, they found a hidden stairwell underneath the altar leading down below. And so they now have, I believe, three keys on hand correct me if i'm wrong varus but i believe you guys have three keys on hand um and they have now entered into the dungeon in area Surrey. what's that sir in Surrey. Surrey. right perfect um and so they have found themselves in this underground basement dungeon beneath the chapel and when they entered into the room that they're in they they it looked like That's an right. alchemist i'm trying to say that not we have four what Four. Oh, man. No, I can't read my notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Math is hard. Um, um, Math is hard for a thief. When the thief says, I only yeah. took five gold, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, and for those yeah. that are noticing, I, I, uh, I've got my souvenir cup from the D&D &D movie last night. 
got a little lid. It's got the little mimic on top of it. It's kind of cool. You might cool. you the, the one I went to didn't only had two small things. Oh, bummer. Yeah, well, like I said, we'll talk about the game or about the uh, the movie uh, afterwards. We'll kind of get your thoughts on it for those that want to hang around and stuff. I'll give you my thoughts on the movie. Um, kind of take my mind with a grain of salt because I have no taste in movies. So um, anyway, so our party has entered into this large room outfitted what appears to be some kind of alch uh, alchemist's laboratory with long wooden shells or wooden tables, I mean, a, a myriad of wood shells filled with strange flasks and glassware, amoebics, calcinators sublimators, anthators, retorts, and distillation apparatus. And if, uh, if you think understanding what any of that means, or if you can't understand what I'm saying, which is good because I don't understand what any of that stuff is because I am not a chemist, but there's a bunch of glassware and bubbly stuff uh, within this room. And the party, uh, when we last left them, had entered into the room, and as soon as um, uh, uh, Baron walked our baron our wizard walked through the door in the north the door itself slammed shut um and these vents equidistantly about every 15 or 20 feet around the upper edge of where the wall meets the ceiling about 20 feet up uh these vents opened up and began pouring this thick mist um uh into the room itself and that is where we are going to pick up as this mist uh, begins to fill up the room. And as it does, I need everybody to give me a saving throw versus spells, please. I will roll for Zadkiel. I'll wait for everybody. Ferris, <laughs> as you watch this mist begin to fill the room and fill it, it does rapidly beginning at everybody's ankles, but it pours over your heads and faces. And as you try to sort of cover your mouth, Everybody except uh, Varys is just a moment too late. And Varys, you watch as all your friends in the room collapse onto the floor. What do you do? I use you, the... Yeah, sorry, Varys is the uh, only one standing. The charm of... Uh, the thing that I have a... Uh, okay. This one, I'm opening, and I open the door. Okay. Um, and get, and get the gas out. All right. Which which door are you opening? The one we came in. Okay. <laughs> as you wave your hand, you hear this click click sound as the door unlocks. Make sure you note that we used one charge from the wand, please. Yep. Yep. I'm going to take it off my my key right now. Okay. Down the seven charges. All right. That way, it didn't have to waste time trying to yeah. pick lock. <laughs> if you do that, the door. You open the door. the The mist continues to flow out over your friends, but it does manage to stop it from filling up because you watched as it filled so fast. It was already up to your shins and covering your. You could see the bodies of your friends are sort of covered in this black mist and now it begins to slowly sort of flow out uh into the the entry hallway with which you guys descended the stairs I'd right like now to, uh, i'm sorry go ahead you do your action like and i'll tell you the door open too. all right you it managed shut and <laughs> all right you managed to get the door spiked and right then, um, now, as we go around, I'm going to go around yep. everybody in order, and then I'll come back to you, Varys. Since you are the only one awake, I want everybody, I want to come through everybody else's actions and stuff first. Actions in the sense that I would like, let's start with, um, let me get my session notes back up. 
I am going to start with Deglin. Just as we do our actions, I'm going to go in order that I normally normally ask you guys. What I miss? What I miss? I'm not looking at the stream. <laughs> Is it monkey raiding us with a party of one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Troy's in the house. <laughs> hey, Troy. Thanks, brother. As soon as I heard the second one come up, I'm like, oh, Troy's dropping bombs on the stream again. Hey, for those that don't know, Cannibal is a favored uh, member of our of our VIPs of our stream. Um, don't don't mind him; he's just in here dropping uh, subscriptions and everybody. So, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. As I said, uh, well, we're not here for the money, but it definitely helps us keep the stream alive with with content. So, Deglin, I need you to roll for me a die ten. Okie dokie. Was that a nine or a six? Six? Six. Yeah, I'm not looking at the dice thingy, so. So, Deglin, as yes. you, as you, this mist sort of flows over the top of you, this sort of drowsiness comes over you, and you find yourself falling. It's almost like the sense of vertigo and you stick your hands out to catch yourself from smacking your face into the end of the floor, but you actually brace yourself against the wall, and as you sort of stop and look, you realize you're no longer in the room that you were with your friends a moment ago. You're in some sort of this dark, dark hallway with this black kind of mist looking almost like it's alive, sort of writhing back and forth. You're not sure if it's alive, but it just gives you that palpable sense that this mist that you're standing in that's flowing around your legs and down the hallway is in fact alive. And as you look down the hall, it goes as far as you can see, which is weird because you don't have any light around you, but somehow you can see the, the shape of the walls and the, the moving of the mist. And in the distance, you see this, this sort of this dot of light right and you hear this sort of this rushing sound like this this loud booming sound and all of a sudden you hear this clickety 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 and the light is moving closer and closer toward you and you hear this rushing horrific sound of like clickety clack clickety clack clickety clack and real world sound, it sounds like a freight like train, a train. coming right down you. And as the mist, as you look down, suddenly the mist sort of fades away and you can see that there's these two metal rails with these cross wooden beams set into the ground that you're standing. I would have and seen then that from ore cart. What's that? I would have known when that is because of ore cart. Of what? Or carts. Oh, oh yes, like yes, yes. Sorry. Yes, mind. exactly. Exactly. It's almost like you're in a mine, but you see this bright light in this huge sort of. And then again, the sound of a clickety clickety, like somebody is pushing a huge, massive ore cart with a light on it, and it's coming your way. Can I get out of the way? Um, the you can you turn and you see that the hall you're in is actually a tunnel of some kind. And it goes as far as you can see the other direction. You see no other ways I mean, of escape. Like no way you up see... against the wall? or So, yes, there is room between the tracks and the wall, but you can't see how big this thing coming at you is, but you get this sense that it's huge, and it's coming towards you. Clickety, clickety. All right, I'm going to go to the clickety, far clickety, right clickety, 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 and lay clickety, down clickety, on the clickety, ground clickety, as flat clickety, as I clickety, can clickety, clickety, clickety. Roll a saving throw versus magic. And Varys, as you're watching, you see Deglin. You see. Twice. I don't know why. That's okay. Uh, first one was with the one we take. You well, see. By the way, you see. Yes. Him, monkey, or him, horny, or not horny, but. Oh, okay. All right, so Zach, he'll have. I don't a... know if you want to hear it to him or yep. hear it to someone I, else. Yep, I will give it here. to him. 
I will give it to him. And I actually lied. Carried over from last stream, Varus, you have a nat 20. Mm -hmm. So, no, he gave it to, he will gave it to, to, uh, Zadkiel. So I will, um, I will mm. honor Cannonball's witches. He might so, need it. <laughs> yeah. As you, as you look, Varus, you see suddenly Deglin get up and he sort of, you see him stand up and he spins around like he doesn't see you, it doesn't appear, but he's like spinning around. He's got his hands out and suddenly he stops and he's looking at the south wall down here. And suddenly you watch him dart over about five or ten feet and throw himself down onto the floor. No hit? No hit now? No response. Deglin, hey, as you... You hear this rushing whomp, and you realize as you're laying down, there is about a six-inch gap between the size of this metal machine that is roaring towards you. There's about a six-inch gap between the wall and the, the machine itself. And you can see that it has these huge stone or, or these huge metal wheels rolling on the track, and there is literally no gap. And just... This thing comes rushing at you. you can, it's coming so fast, you can actually feel the wind rushing in ahead of it, pushing on you. And you realize that Jaskar must be calling you home today because this thing just rolls right over the top of you. And the next thing you know, you're sitting up, sweating, panting. Your heart is racing a thousand miles an hour. As you wake up lying, you sit up and you realize that you're sitting down in this black misty substance that is still slowly seeping out of the vents and you look up and you see Varys at the very far end of the room looking your way saying are you all right I guess so I thought I was going to heaven <laughs> well I was about to trying to come save you to save the others but I got my hair out. All right, Aaron. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up, make sure I'm out of the gap. All right, Baron, roll me a d10, please. Yeah, I'm gonna. Start. <laughs> you wanna? <laughs> oh crap! That's not good, is it? Yeah. Mm. You uh, uh, just in the room, and the door slams down behind you, and you look around, wondering what the heck this heavy, thick black mist pours over you, and you feel this sense of vertigo, and you begin reeling, and you stumble forward, and when you catch yourself, suddenly, you find yourself standing in some sort of a, a king's audience room. There's a huge crowd of people around you, and before you, you can see this ruler, whoever he is, sitting on his throne. He has his queen to one side. You can see that he has several guards, obviously, protecting him from the sides. He has what appears to be uh, an advisor of some sort. And leaning over to you, is a human male wearing very fine clothes. You can tell it looks to be made of the finest silk. It has platinum um, uh, clasps sort of clipping the shirt together. Um, the typical flared kind of sleeves. Um, he has what looks to be silver actually woven in his hair to kind of hold it in place in a ponytail and as you kind of look at him and you look down at yourself and you are dressed in similar attire you are wearing clothes that you could only dream about how expensive they must be it's something perhaps you may aspire to um wealth wise but right now you you're sort of standing there and the uh the man next to you says so how does it feel to be favored of the king this day and to be granted those lands that you so richly deserve, sir. And as you kind of look at him and 
your face a little bit confused. You hear a herald of the king call out. Next on his majesty's docket, Lord to be Baron, please come take your place before his majesty. And everybody sort of turns and looks at you expectantly. Baron. I guess I, I guess <laughs> I just like go. I don't. Know. I was like, I didn't know. I guess I just walk up there. As you walk up, you are greeted with a smile by an advisor to the king, who sort of steps back and um, waves his arm, and you you see this individual. He's wearing amber colored clothing. He has a very well manicured beard, just a little bit of gray in there. His hair is pulled back almost like a, uh, 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 Oh, what's his name? Um, anyway, um, he has a little bit of gray along the sides of his, uh, 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 around the sides of his temples and stuff. And he stands up and he moves down the, the dais with which to, to greet you almost face to face as he's slightly taller than you. Um, and you immediately, you don't know how, but you recognize him. You recognize him. You know his name. You don't, you know he's an, uh, he's a the Amber V family and, and the name just sort of comes to you, Stephen. You know that this is Stephen Amber, the, the king who was allegedly killed by his brother and sister who laid a curse onto this entire place. And he sort of, puts his hand on your shoulder and you feel this, you can feel the power of this guy. You know that not only is he a king, but he is a powerful, powerful arcanist. And he sort of smiles at you as his blue eyes kind of bearing into you. Today, this day, my friend, for all that you have done, for my friends, family, and countrymen, I do hereby anoint you, Lord Baron, ruler of the Northwest Forest. You, sir, shall be first protector of our lands. And you feel this sort of well of energy sort of swipe through you, and immediately you're sitting up exactly where you originally came in but now you're on the floor and you sit up lying next to you is Zadkiel standing next to you at the door is is Varus you almost smack him in the knees um, uh, with your head as you sort of sit up as the entire vision that you were just going through and it was more than just a vision it was a reality as far as you know you sit up and Varus is standing there. He has the northern door open. He just finishes spiking it open. And the dream just sort of fades, leaving you alone with your friends. So, Tall, please roll for me a die 10. It's <laughs> <The> train. <laughs> Choo choo! <laughs> nah, I hope it's something else. <laughs> I want it. I want a story too. As you, yeah, you you step in and you're you're sort of checking out this this other door, which by the way was locked. And as you shook it, you realize, okay, it's locked. Let's check something else. And suddenly, this black mist sort of flows over you. You feel this sense of vertigo. And when it passes, you suddenly find yourself standing in the mountains. Uh, the mountains you've never seen before, at least nothing that you can recognize has any familiar landmark. The mountains themselves are extremely steep and sharp as compared to the mountains where you're from, which are a little more subdued, not quite as high, not quite as peaked. And as you look around, you can see that 
the land, the the plants in a nearby valley, if you can call it that, so more like a, a depression, but call it a valley. The it looks sort of corrupted, and it looks as if something dead or evil is growing there, and you feel drawn to it. You feel like this is where I am supposed to go. And as you go down the hill into this depression, you can see that the trees sort of move to, and you would swear, you can't, you don't see it happen, but you would swear that some of these trees that you were passing sort of turned to look at you. You see no eyes, but you see that they're twisted bark, they're, they're, trunks and whatnot and their their branches are sort of twisted and, and raising upward and you look around and you don't see what could be the cause but you could see this sort of a uh a rise up ahead that's very sharp and steep you could probably climb it being the thief and, and uh very acrobatic that you are but you sort of move toward it and as you look up about a hundred feet or so you can see that there is a cave opening give me a, a a climb walls check please you look up and as you look around <clears throat> trying to figure where this evil must be coming from and how why is it plaguing everything around the only thing that you can see that could make sense is perhaps there's something in this cave so you climb up and you get to the top and you hear the clang of metal as if something heavy slams down onto metal it's not really like it doesn't sound like a little like a, a forge hammer slamming on metal like working stone like well, i'm talking like a huge heavy metal object just clangs down on something else metal think of it as like a a giant portcullis or something slamming down onto another metal you hear this clang followed by this rush of steam or a rush of air just and as as you sort of look to see where it's coming from down below far down the hill just out of sight you see this sort of this rush of steam coming up out of the ground and you're wondering maybe i should go there and you go to step but then suddenly you hear this whoosh sound behind you and whirling with your blades in hand. You see that about 15 feet into the cave, there is this metallic looking wall. And that wall sort of opens up like like literally just lifts up as if it's this, somebody put this metal wall or this uh, this wall down. And then there's this whooshing sound and this the back wall of the cave literally lifts up and you can see inside this strange alien looking place. It's all metal and you can see like lights. Think of it as like a Freddy Krueger scene with the lights flickering on and off and stuff um, where it, you're like you're walking in a back alley and the, the, the street lights are sort of flickering dark and whatnot. That sort of has that vibe to it. And as you look in, you see this metal golem with these red sort of eyes and you hear this almost like an alarm sound and you watch it's this eye this red eye in front of it just cycles back and forth coming from its body somewhere these two red beams of light come flashing out you immediately manage to dive and duck out of the way but in doing so you lose your balance and you go tumbling down the hill. You slam onto the, the the ground where you climbed up. And next thing you know, you're sitting up coughing. The air knocked from your lungs. You're coughing, wheezing, sort of rolling over, pushing yourself up to look around to see if the, the, the creature was coming down after you, only to see that you are now back in the room with your friends. And you're where, like, the Where heck? is it? What's going on? I try to run away from this place. As you as you move over, you find that that Varus has managed to open the door, and it 
and he uh, the 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 mist is sort of flowing out of the room. It's not filling it up, but it has begun to stop. You can see uh, Varus that the 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 mist or whatever it is, this this hallucinogenic dust or whatever it is, has begun to stop coming from the vents, and it's begin to beginning to sort of taper off. That's fair. Ronnie. Need you to please give me a uh, D10 roll. Uh -huh. Heck is that? Ronnie got the one. Ronnie's number one. So, Ronnie. I'm gonna use, uh, find my use my newfound wealth to plant a new forest, DM. <laughs> All right, Ronnie is. As you are standing, as you come into the room and you're sort of looking around trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Where did Ronnie go in the first place? Who's somebody over the top of Ronnie? Where does character go? Down at the bottom of the room. Oh. Oh, there he is. I'm apologizing. Okay. So, there we go. Like, I, I, I had it zoomed in too far. So, as you're down there sort of looking at some of these alchemist um, items, you see the mist begin to flow out and before you have a chance to react or get away you manage to breathe in just a little bit of it give me a um give me a, a intelligence check please ronnie nice um so so you don't know what it is but the bitterness that it leaves on your lips as you begin to get drowsy. You realize it's some sort of a hallucinogenic drug or something, but immediately that thought goes away as you find yourself trudging, trudging, trudging. You are no longer in the chamber with your friends. You're standing outside in some kind of a, a desert, but it's not like any desert you've ever seen before because you see twisted rock and tree uh the remains of trees and whatnot sort of reaching uh toward the heavens uh basically in futileness of trying to get some kind of water or whatever um this alien death-like landscape the the sand itself really isn't a sand either it's more like this thick mushy dust and you're sort of trudging through it and you watch as suddenly a dust devil sort of spins up out of nowhere, oof, blasting your face like with sandpaper, but it, the, instead of straight sand, it's this thick, heavy, powdery dust that sort of gets in every nook and cranny, and you sort of fend it off, trying to keep from breathing it. And in your mind, you realize that you you are are supposed to be here although you don't know where here is you you know that your quest the end of your quest lies someplace in the direction that you're walking you're not sure what it is but you know that this is the direction that you have to go because only you only ronnie noblight most powerful druid in all the land can get to the source of the power necessary to fix the blight that has begun sweeping over the entire known world. This place that you're in, you know it's an ancient place. Uh, you've heard tales that this land at one time, back centuries and centuries ago, this was fertile land, but the magic that was cast down upon it literally melted everything for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles in all directions. But you know that at the seat of where the magic was is the key to unlocking the fix for the blight that now is sweeping across all of the forests and hills and mountains and trees of your beloved world. And so you trudge on. Eventually, you come to the top 
of this huge rise and you can see this valley stretched out before you and poking up at various places from this huge sea of dust as you've come to call it are these ancient monolithic structures looks like perhaps at one time this whole place was a massive city of stone you can see some towers of 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 ancient structure um, have long since toppled but they still remain above some of the the points of dust and just on the horizon you're not sure how far it is maybe a mile maybe 20 miles you don't know you see this glittering sort of like a, a gem or a huge piece of glass sort of sparkling in the sunlight the it becomes literally so bright that you 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 really have to sort of turn away and you realize that it is your god coming directly to speak to you and he puts his hand upon your shoulder and it burns it's so bright you can't see and you feel this pain erupting from your back as you suddenly sprout this huge set of white snowy wings as he says upon you my child this will make your traveling easier and sure enough you begin to flap your wings woof, woof, pulling your feet up out of the dust you manage to get up perhaps 10 or 20 or now even 30 feet above the sand dunes and you begin sweeping your way toward whatever this place is you can see this black gaping opening like a maw sort of a, a huge skull coming up out of the earth like it's eating the ground but also forming an entry into the underdark below you know that's where you have to go you you can't you cannot deny yourself uh the you can't deny your your desires that you have to go there and so you sort of fold the wings back and dive down you swoop into the darkness next thing you know you find yourself rolling along the floor inside this thick black mist and you stand up and you throw your arms out and as you throw your arms out you you find yourself standing at the the same place that you were with your friends but something feels on your back like it it hurts and you have to rip your shirt off and everybody in the room you watch as ronnie sort of stands and he rips his shirt off and suddenly sprouting from ronnie's back are two white snowy wings as you realize that your deity has granted you the ability to fly what do you do well dm i i thank him and say you know i make sure i'm i'm very thankful and appreciative it seems to it was a uh, well warranted i will use my new wings to spread acorns and other bushes throughout and i'm going to head towards those ruins and so i already went you're not in no you are you are back in the room with your friends now oh do i have you, wings on yes that's what i said you ripped your shirt off and you now have these wings sprouted from your back as you I'm look and you see all of your room a little bit all right it takes you um, a little bit of getting used to but after a few minutes you actually are able to fly about the room the wings you feel that you you sort of have to get used to how to flex your muscles and properly get them to control but you now have a set of wings sprouting from your back excellent perfect couldn't have happened to a better person I let the guys know it's time to rock and roll. You guys all watch as Ronnie sort of comes up out of the mist. And as I said, he's got this wild look about him for a second. And then he realizes where he is. And then he sort of rips his shirt off. And then you see he has these huge, not huge, but he has these large set of wings sort of sprouting from his back. 
as he sort of flexes and stretches and flies about the room for a second. And you all find yourselves as you all find yourselves. What's that, sir? Oh, I was saying you're mutated. You mean him? You mean him? The burn you really are. <laughs> well, we always knew he was bird brain, so. Any <laughs> flight movement, uh, I will get to you later, but it's basically the same as your regular movement. Excellent, thank you, DM. <laughs> That's a good thing he stays out in the woods. <laughs> Those wings are going to look awful weird when you walk into town. <laughs> so then, you manage to spike it open, and as I said, it sort of um, tapers off, right? All of the uh, mist and, and stuff sort of tapers off. Um, and eventually stops flowing from the vents. Well, uh, what would you like to do now, my friends? Do we want to even bother looking around more, or do we want to just head by him too? Well, there's, is, there's two doors, right? Correct. I see a door straight across from me, and then there's yeah, a door. Yeah, down here. Yep. Yeah, and then there's a door... Top left corner. Yeah. Yep. Your call. I mean, you guys are already up there. I can. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on. Um. I want to change the trap. Okay. Nice. No traps. This is the safest door you have ever found. <laughs> is it locked? It is not locked. Alright. You want to open it? I'm trying to get my character to move, and all it's doing is opening my character sheet. It's like not letting me move. Oh, maybe it's not. There we go. Thank you, did DM. you move me? I did. Yeah, thank you, DM. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? And now, it's, now it's allowing me to move. I don't know. Alright, so I open up the door. Open up the door and you can see a pair of hallways, basically one running straight ahead and one running off to your left. Uh, just a little bit. Traps me on the door. Okay. Ooh, this is a safe hallway. No traps yep. anywhere. Well, I see a door. I want to do that and I want to go around the hallway. Uh, I'm good with either of them. Let's check the first. Okay. It's a trap. Once again, no traps. Wow. <laughs> All right, here we go. You can do so first off, you see directly across from me, there's another door, right? In the mm -hmm. center of this, this room is bare, as far as you can see. There are a couple large candelabras setting up, um, but they provide no light. But in the center of this otherwise bare room is a 10-foot deep sunken pit filled with liquid. A thin glass sphere floats in the middle of the pit. Inside the sphere can be seen a large silver key. Oh, wow. All right. Nothing's mm. trapped on the inside of the door. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, no yeah it doesn't do that. Dude's sword also does stuff. Yeah, you want to check the magic? Uh, it's a tall. It's a tall. tall. Yeah. I'm going to step in since I didn't find any trap. I'm never not going in the water. <laughs> you can see, like I said, it's um, 
shows it as floating. It's actually, you can see the, the liquid itself is all clear. And you can just below the surface, you can see that this thing is floating in the water, suspended in the oh, water. It's in the water. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like sitting on top no. of it. It's sort of inside. I can take my 10 foot pole off and... Oh, uh, that thing looks off. What is it made out of? That sphere. Uh, like, it looks to be glass, like a clear glass. It would be fine thing to... I don't know. Um, oh, and then set magic on it first. Made me have a... Could have a mountain fly over and smooth it up. Or, uh, well, I can try to move it over with a pole. Anybody got telekinesis? <laughs> I wish I did. Well, you can fly. Go get it. <laughs> well, it's not just accessible, though, isn't it? Isn't it inside the tube? It is. It's it's floating. It's in the key itself is inside a glass sphere. The sphere itself is suspended in the liquid. Right, so it's it's below the surface, but you can see it clearly oh, okay. suspended in okay. the fluid. Is there like a rope hanging from the ceiling? It is not. It is just sitting there, right in the middle. Can I whack the water or the fluid, like with my quarter staff, and see if anything happens? I can reach it with my favorite pole. All right. Take it for me, please. Me? Yeah. You said you want to hit the water with your quarterstaff. Yeah. All right. You bring your staff, and it splashes into the liquid. Uh, let's see. What is... Armor class is four. All right. As this liquid splashes up, not onto you, but it hits your quarterstaff, and you watch it as it goes. Uh, even though your quarterstaff is magical, you can see that it um, it's like an acid of some kind. Oh. It begins eating into the wood. Um, as you do the shock of the quarterstaff striking the top of the fluid sends this little shock wave and it pushes the container or the, the sphere to the bottom roll a, um, uh, Baron, please roll for me a, your quarterstaff's damage, please. So your quarterstaff, I believe is a plus two so one die six plus two please six hit points of damage total you guys watch as this thing travels much faster than you would expect through the liquid it hits the bottom and you can see that the glass itself sort of shatters and then it floats back up and it gets suspended but you can see even though that's in the liquid you can see that liquid is now seeping through the cracks and whatnot in the sphere. All right, I need a mage hand. I need it now. <laughs> Quick, somebody run uh, over to fifth edition and borrow somebody. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we got the man holding there. I was just looking. There's, there's a post your levitation. Yeah, there's a post your levitation. That's, uh, yeah, but that, uh, yeah, that's for potion of flying. Uh, it's 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 acid. We need we need, we need something that that can be. How about a flask of oil of slipperiness so that your hand would be protected with the oil from the acid? Yes. No, uh, we need we need something that can like get to it and pull it out. Uh -huh. Ronnie, can you turn into a spider? Climb up on the ceiling, lower a web, and just pick it up and like drag it out or drag it to the edge, or we can like swoop it out or something. 
I cannot turn into a spider, bird, lizard, and mammal. Bird. Don't forget bird. this. Don't forget this is suspended beneath the surface, right? So regardless of where you go, oh, yeah. you're going to have to reach through to get to it. Yeah. Where are you headed, Satal? What about a grapple hook? That pull it out. Or is it too far down that it... You know, as it might... As it will be held in the middle, but I don't know how fast. Yeah. You would eat the rope, too. Yeah. Um, the tall as you leave, Sad Kill follows. Hey, where are you going? Man, that really sounded like... <laughs> no, we cannot hear you, sir. Oh, he, he's doing that thing again. Yep. Uh, no, I can't. no, 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 I have a new headset actually. Uh, ah, nope, you're back button. now. You're back now. Okay, I was talking uh, for a while. So I go I go in the lab and I check all these uh, glasses stuff. Okay. I try to find something that I Give could reach. Give me a search check, please. Uh, D6? D6, search. correct. A D6 search, just like a secret door search. Yeah, um, searching around, you find there's a lot of, like, vials and containers and stuff like that, but, like, nothing that you think of that you could think would help. What about... Okay, back down the air either. Yeah, that was just a search for the whole area. Okay, okay no problem. All right, come back. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, you can leave it. It's not like a big I mean, deal. I mean, we can go back and search some more. See if we can find a, like a, a shovel or something to scoop it out with. Uh, there's a table here, right? Yes. It's a plank? It is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut, I'm gonna cut the, the legs. Okay. Takes about I'm, 10 or 15 minutes, but you manage to cut the legs from the table leaving it now just a couple of planks nailed together i just want i just want the the, the table top you know yeah yep so, so i bring it here okay yeah, as you guys are sort of pondering what's going on you hear some loud banging coming from the direction that you guys originally came from and a minute later here comes satal dragging a large broken tabletop into the room I'll help him, David. It's so nice. <laughs> oh, I forgot he's strong too on that note. <laughs> totally forgot about that. So my plan is to uh <clears throat> to plunge it under. Okay. And with uh oh, and then, like, side, it up. with a side uh back here and i i want to use it as a, as a lever either to yeah to make it jump in the air on the other side or to roll back to me okay and very good if it rolled back to me i'm not gonna touch it for a while uh, give me yeah. a find <laughs> remove <back>. traps <laughs> give me a find removes track trap please uh so tall uh, uh, manage to get the board under it and as you begin to lift it up it starts rolling back and then there's like the sizzling popping sound as the acid begins to eat into the wood and it causes it to jump right and so it it sort of pops like pop rocks underneath this little piece of glass and it causes it to jump it comes back down and then there's a sickening as the glass breaks and the oh. key falls back into the acid. Oh, and as soon as it God. hits into the acid, you watch immediately the key begins to get dissolved. And within just a few seconds, the key is dissolved into nothingness. All right. Sorry, guys. Well, you might have just had us all stay here for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're now stuck here, family. <laughs> we're now stuck here forever. I call dibs on, on the druid's wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, right. All right. 
Well, that was a colossal failure. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully... Gotta take that's the good with the bad, fellas. Hopefully that's what you right. didn't actually have to have. Can I hear him on that 20 and make that 15? Uh, just a second here real quick. Um, let's see. Cannibal gave the net 20. Agamorin, I apologize. Uh, who, oh, for the party? Okay, so the party also has a nat 20 from Agamorin. Wow. All right, so let me go ahead and... Um, so Agamorin got that, and yes... Again, these things happen on the stream because I can only have, like, if I have anything covering up my stream view, nobody sees any changes until the only, like, I have to literally have one dedicated screen to the view I'm showing on the stream because if I, like, open up any of my documents or notes or anything over the top of it so it, the window is up on top, none of the changes get reflected out on the stream. Um, nobody did... Uh, Nobody did a check on the door before you opened it? Uh, everybody just walked nope, the door? I just opened it with my big balls, DM. I like it. Oh. As you open the door, oh. you can see that you are an intersection of hallways. You can see one running left and right, one running straight ahead, and see doors in several different places. Where to, my children? This I don't know if you heard my... My question or not? I did not hear it. I'm sorry, Varys. Sorry. I wanted, oh, I wanted oh, to oh, find oh, out. I wanted to find out if we can use either a Gomrins or my Nat Twenty to, un to make him succeed. Uh, sure. I will allow that. If you want to use the, you'd have to be the party one. It would not be. We'd not be able to use a Varys's personal Nat Twenty. That's fine. You want know, let's let's use the the party one and. Undo that, and okay. Cause we don't know, we don't know how many keys are probably real or how many are fake. Okay. Or if there's any that are fake, so you know, losing any of them might do us here. <laughs> to successfully make your roll, um, which, by the way, um, what did you? I forgot what you rolled. I rolled a 68, which was a failure. Yeah. That gotcha. is. Uh... Yep. Yep. All right. So, yes, I will definitely allow that. So, that's that's the whole reason that we have those. Uh, so, let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Too late. He had already did it. So, yeah, as, as the gods rewind time just ever so briefly, <laughs> the snap and pop begins to... Um, it catches underneath this little glass globe. It sends it up in the air lands back down onto the um, board and then shatters and the key goes to bounce over the side but immediately with the reflexes of a cat Satal lets the wood sink into the pit and he grabs the key out of the air you feel a burning on your hands as you drop the key quickly onto the floor but not in the acid as you quickly wipe the acid off and you suffer no damage although your hand is a little bit red from where it came in contact with the key covered in the acid. Um, eventually, um, you look down and you can see a damp, but not... You could see that it had a little bit of acid got on, like, the handle or whatever, but the key itself appears to be intact. And it is duplicate, or almost duplicate, uh, to the other keys that you guys have in your possession. Yay! By the way, each one of these keys is valued about 500 gold, if I didn't already tell you that. No, you didn't, but, uh, it's fun to know that. So, are you writing it down? Then? Yeah, I'm putting it in the treasure. Alright. So we have four keys now. We rich. Alright. Well, we, we need these to undo the hers. Yeah, since he's already gone out, let's investigate down here where did he go uh, now they, they're all down if I just kick a door open what are the odds that it goes bad 
Uh, <laughs> you want me to check it? Yeah, oh, probably. Come on, Timmy, All right, let's check yeah. this one in the cell here. Okay. The door is not trapped, but you do find it is locked. All right. Uh, I try and kick it down. Sure, uh, go ahead. No, no. Okay. You only have one hit point, but that's okay. Let me let me pick it, man. I thought you said it was reset. Well, you know, I yeah, it is. You 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 have the hit points, but you just you can't do anything. You have no spells that you can do, no oh, yeah. no attacks that you can do or anything. Yeah, let me pick it. I'm I'm trying to hit it now. All right. And as you're sitting there mucking with the door, suddenly there's a as you unlock it. Open up the door, you see that this is a room with another exit. It appears to be filled with dusty shells. Mm. Pretty much appears to be empty. Not, doesn't appear to be anything else in the room except these dusty shells. Uh, be careful just walking in the room for dust. <laughs> so now Ron, Ronnie and Satal both got net 20s. Uh, in a Ronnie Asseltel? Yeah. Nice. Oh my god, thank you whoever gave it to me. It's Iger. Oh, that's Iger's with us tonight. Never mind. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. yeah. Iger's dropping 20s on my other party. Damn it. <laughs> 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 Thanks, D. Appreciate that, brother. Thanks, Didi. Uh, Anything on the show? Yeah. yeah, I'm searching. Yeah. Roll. Let's roll. Right. So you guys are searching around. Most of the room is just all dust. However, Varus, you managed to find a sort of stuck up on one of the top shelves kind of out of the way this old dusty scroll not in a tube just literally just an old piece of parchment kind of rolled up all right i'm gonna let um it's all uh protect magic on it or okay. anybody tries to read it <laughs> okay mm -hmm. i uh take this sword out say hello okay uh, cast a spell. Okay. It is not magical. All right. That's magical crap. I will carefully wipe, use a piece of cloth and wipe off the dust. Okay. And then, uh, un un unroll it. Okay. If I can read any of it. Because I know a lot of languages. <laughs> Plus I have, uh, the open read on, um, Language. So it's 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 in a sort of a language that you understand, more of a common type, and it says, "The secret that will break the curse surrounding Cas or Chateau de Amberville and lift the gray mist is engraved on the lid of Stephen Amber's casket. To summon Prince Stephen's tomb from beyond space and time, four magical items are needed." The four items, the enchanted sort of Silaire, the viper circled mirror, the ring of Iban, and the potion of time travel can be found in Averon, our old homeland. Touch the ring to the viper's tail, anoint the sword with the potion, shatter the mirror with the sword, and the prince's tomb will appear. And then scribbled um, along that, um, you can see some notes that aren't part of the original scroll but like you see the word solaire and the word enchanted sword and then some names or locations next to it like sephora or amaliki and then vions is the viper circled mirror gaspar du nord which is apparently a name perignon uh the ring of ivan right so i if you guys go to the journal i have now allowed you to see the castle amber journal note um let me go here so i can bring it up for everybody to see 
so it won't keep going away. But if you guys go to uh, Castle Amber under journal notes, you can see what it says. And at the bottom, as I said, there's some notes scribbled in handwriting that's not the scroll. It's completely different. Um, but that's basically what it says. We Gaspar, Gaspar does not mean Gaspar from the north. Look at you. See, this is why we have rogues with no, us, because no, they have, they no, have read maybe languages. It's of, maybe it's a piece of puzzle. Maybe it's from the <laughs> north. So I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, like Luc, I said. Luc, Luc Le Chaudronnier means uh, he's a cook or something that, that's doing right. soup. Chaudronnier means a big pot. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to. So I do have that open so you guys can read it and refer to it whenever you want. You've got it on hand now. <clears throat> so. so and also le ibu mean the oils the all owls you know the birds nice. oh oh okay so oh, owl. Oh. owl yeah the owls and there's nice. three names very cool good thing we got somebody that knows french huh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's I why I, I, I planned this i planned this I know. the whole time <laughs> Because we don't know none of that parlay vu around here. Continue on. So, um, let's check this. You guys find nothing but dust. There are like holes and stuff, yeah, but it's really all that's left is the bindings and stuff. The papers have long since turned to dust, so you have no idea what any of it is. Fortunately, that one piece managed to. You want to go through that door or go back through the door we just came out? Looks like the magic mean, users. The mines, uh -oh. Let's follow the mage. <laughs> Do them all eventually. Let's follow the mage. How no, they end up getting us killed? Uh, uh, <laughs> Why am I leading? I'm like the most vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. You're really Stay behind. I mean, you, you, you're rarely air, so now you can open the way. Should we just check out the hallways <laughs> first? Make sure. We go. Uh, we make sure. Now we're going to check this door. I'm hearing the doors one at a time. Okay. Yeah, we can make sure that there's no like monsters in these hallways. Is it safe? Is it secret? Keep it safe. Keep it safe. So you, uh, sorry, did you roll? Yep, you find no yeah. traps on the door. Is it locked? It is locked. Um, <laughs> Click, click, the door does not unlock. All right. Uh, you want to try it, Susan? <laughs> yeah. I'll try. If it doesn't work, I'll just kick it. Uh, open the door. Yeah. Door does not budge. Okay, I kick it. <laughs> okay. Give me a Ben Bars lift. Gates check. Please. I don't have that in my. Well, mine is. Hold on. And I don't know how to find the, the strength I have. I, you I got a 21, to... right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to. It's I don't in the know deities of the... demigods. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's in the first couple of chapters. Uh, strength. Ben Bar's lift gates as 21 is 70 percent as frost strength. 70 percent. All right, roll a D100, get under a 70%. Nice. You guys watch this. So Tal says, enough of this garbage. And he's like, <laughs> ah. he kicks the door. It slams open. On the other side, you see a small horde of undead surrounding the top of a pit leading into darkness. Ah, son of a bitch. Close the door! Close the door! There's no more doors. There is no door. I, I take my sword. Oh, Oops. We disappeared. My bad. That's my fault. We're all dying. We all yep. died. 
I zoom out of here. <laughs> <laughs> cast a fireball. He can't. He can't cast any spells. We have to rest. We have to rest. Uh, he can't. He even after he rest, he has he remember nine days. Nine days. For nine days. Yep. All right. So let us go here. Let me get out my notes. Let us talk about actions. Deglin, action. Burn! Actually, it'll be death, but uh, just the lower amount. So I think it's up. Yep. Baron, action. Run away. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> oh. I'm going to take my weapons out and attack. I'm going to, like, protect the, the cleric as he, uh, I know what he's going to do. So. Okay. Like actions. I'm going to use my spear from the second rank DM and stab them bad boys. Get pause the this music first. All right. On your spear. Varus, actions. Very useful. All right. Nice, Sam. Yep. If it, and, if it were needed. <laughs> yep. And Zadkiel is going to. Come rushing to the aid. He doesn't think he'll need a turn, so he's just gonna break out his sword and head. He's actually with you guys. So let me move him over there really quick, lest I forget. Oops. Oh, that was <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> we oh. all shifted. <laughs> well, I had everybody selected, so I went to move the paladin, and it ended up moving everybody. Ah. But I selected everybody to add you all to combat, and then I forgot right. to deselect everybody. So, all right, so. Everybody has their actions prepared. Everybody told me what they're going to do. Now we roll for initiative. Can you, uh, Party gains initiative. Yay! Uh, Can you set the, the Paladin Aura? So we... Please. I, ne I never remember if it's 5 or 10 feet. The 10 foot aura. Is it permanent? It is a permanent 10 foot or you are nice. That's pretty cool. If you are in that spear, um, then you get a plus two to your attack. Well, no, I'm sorry. They get a minus two to their attack against you. All right. I don't know and why. And we get a plus two? Both? No? Um, hang on to re-roll this initiative because I started combat and it re-rolled. There we go. Ronnie, you're up. But you're just, uh, they aren't there yet so I guess you hold your action until they show up. That is correct, DM. As soon as one pokes his little rotten flesh over there, he's going to find my spear stabbing him. Varys, you turned invisible. Sotal, I hold my attacks for the first one that comes okay. to protect the cleric. Baron, are you staying there or are you going to move away? Okay. I'm going oh. zoom. I like it. All right, dang it. Why is this? Okay. All right. Uh, Dad kill is going to wait till after the turn and then he'll move into attack. Deglin. Turn. Uh, so double check these bad boys just to make sure you are a ninth level yeah, yeah. what are they, they yeah, look like it doesn't cool. matter you're gonna automatically they uh they turn as whites but you automatically turn them too so I just need a two to uh it's not what's the uh the number uh roll one to twelve roll a d12 to see how many are Blasted into oblivion. Oh, come on. He <laughs> goes. Like so What's that? Look like a leaner to me. Yeah, I think He's so. <laughs> literally screw me every time we play. <laughs> hey, man. If it, if it wasn't for that, nobody else would have any fun with the undead. Just well, saying. So I'm going to tell you in game... Uh, it must be the fog or this castle. It's your god. I think you have to pray more often. Uh. As the ghoul rushes and attacks, um, yeah, he can't get to 
Yeah, that's and I he's get just my... on the cusp of the range of the paladin. All right, so Should I get my attack first, or uh, yes, go ahead and do your attack first as I'm, he moves I'm, up. I'm tr okay. I targeted it. Should I stab him right there, DM? Uh, actually, yeah, I guess I should say, well, it doesn't matter yeah, either sorry, way. So, sorry. That's fine. Either way, you're both going to get your attack. What was the damage? 20? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my first attack. Oh, it's yep. good. Sorry, Ron. Ron yep. Sorry. And that's the only attack you get for the round. So if another one comes up, yeah. then you don't get that sure. attack. Um, however, Ronnie will get his attack as this one moves up as well. Ronnie, go ahead and roll your attack against armor class 6. Rolling my thing. Hit it with a hammer. You have to just roll manually. It's totally okay. Fourteen, which hit. D six plus it's a plus two or plus three spear. Plus, plus three. three. Four hit points of damage. All right. That for Ronnie, as the ghoul now targets Deglin. As he gets three attacks. His first claw attack. Fifteen misses. That misses as well. I'm not. I forgot to take the minus two off either way. So let me do minus two. And all three attacks from the ghoul miss. All right. Next ghoul comes up. Targets Sotal this time. Oops. Select here. All right. First is claw attack. Miss. Second claw attack. Oops, forgot the minus two. Six misses. Fight attack. And all three attacks on him miss as well. The other two ghouls jump up. And that brings us to the end of the round. Top of the round. Deglin, action. Am I allowed to turn again or no? No. Turn once right. per group. The paladin will attempt to turn, but as of right yeah, now. Yeah, let's have him attempt to turn. But then uh, otherwise I'll just use my mace. Okay. Baron hanging out. Sotal weapons. Ronnie spear again. Yes. Yep, Varus, there's no real way that you're going to be able yeah. to get to uh, backstab, so I'm not sure what you want to do while you're invisible. You're just going to hang out and wait? I missed I miss this step. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll just wait. Okay. Stay I'll invisible, just wait. Though, I assume, right? Yeah, I'm just staying invisible. All right, and yeah, the paladin is going to turn. Me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As the paladin is going to attempt to turn as we roll for initiative... As the party once again gains the initiative, Ronnie Noblight, go ahead and poke him at with your spear. Which one do you want? You can take either one. The one uh, you already hit, or? Yes. Okay. Sixteen plus three, nineteen hits. D D six plus three, please. Nice, for another six hit points of damage as Ronnie Noblight catches it right in between the eyes, puncturing his spear all the way through its head, out its back of its head, and it collapses to the floor dead, screaming all the while. Ain't Varys, no light around here. <laughs> Varys is hanging out. Sultal, go ahead and roll your two attacks. attack 
takes out the ghoul. You step up. Get your second attack. That hits as well. For another 19. My dagger. That one is out. Baron. Zad kill. I have a dagger, but uh, I failed here. Yeah, it did not hit. Sorry, I forgot you had that third one. As Zad Keel moves in, he's actually just going to attack it with his sword. No need to waste his turn. It's points of damage. Just enough. As Zadkiel takes out the last of the undead. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. What could go wrong in a place like this? These creatures are right. so easy. Alright. What's in the pit? Um, You don't well, know. Only, <laughs> only the druid can know. <laughs> yeah, fly down there, druid. Tell us what's in the pit. So, looking down, you can see that the pit is deeper than your eyes can see. Zadkiel, Zadkiel and um, Deglin both, you feel an incredible power of unholiness emanating from deep within the bowels of this earth. Oh, shit. Well, do we want to try to explore this thing? Come back to it later. What, what do you mean exactly explore this thing? This is this is a pit to hell or something. We don't know where. Yeah, we, we don't need to be going in there. So, we, sorry. We need to solve this whole thing here. I hear. I can, can we see down. into it at all, DM? What's that, son? Can we see into it at all? You can see as far as your eyes will allow you, but it's it's much deeper, even than the elf vision of ninety feet. It's it's deeper than that. Okay, is, we can go ahead. Is there a ladder? There is not. It's rough hewn earth and stone. Earth and rock, if you will. Take a torch out of my backpack. Okay. L listen, we can light it up and throw it down, but if there's something slipping down there, it might. We might wake it up. I was born in the darkness. What do you mean? You have white wings. You look <laughs> like an angel. There's no <laughs> way you were born in the dark. You were born in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> but it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What to I, do, gents? I, I light the torch up. Okay. And I give it to Ronnie. Ronnie. You you decide then. Well, I'm going to bring the torch over there and just illuminate what we can see. The torch light goes less than as far as the elves could see. Once you get the torch down there, suddenly the elf vision stops at about 20 or 30 feet, which is the how much the torch illuminates. All right, damn. I let go. You let the torch go. You watch it whoo, disappears. Everybody, and get ready. <laughs> you watch. You watch as it drops and drops, and you see the flickering get dimmer and dimmer, and suddenly you hear this thud, and the light disappears. The light disappears. <laughs> yeah. Um, you hear a thud as the torch strikes something solid, perhaps the bottom of this place, um, but it is extinguished. But all you saw all the way down was this rough-hewn dirt stone stat, uh, shaft. Looks like perhaps they clawed whatever those creatures were, the ghouls. Looks like they were have been clawing their way from deep below the earth for a long time to get here. Yeah, and I'd say we just come back later if we can't find anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. well, who knows? Maybe this leads to a tunnel that tunnels out underneath the fog or something. Okay. Um, I know that. <laughs> I'll, 
How long did the torch fell for? 10 seconds? 20 um, seconds? 30 seconds? So then I can tell you. Ronnie, don't run away. I'm trying. It's like one half AT squared. So. One half AT. Yeah, I'm just remembering my days of physics. So it's 0.5 AT squared. So. So A is is 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So if you take ah. 9.8, that's that's the uh, for gravity, right? And you multiply that by time squared, half of that is the distance, that's right? All round globe shenanigans. The, the rules that's are it? totally different on a flat earth. Oh, oh is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I I wanted to do this the official way, so I'm going to go this. Uh, it's not it's uh, 10 yep. meter per second usually yeah 9.8 is what meter. we say yeah not yep. yeah so one second uh, only fall five meters for that first second on a flat plane so it, <laughs> yeah so you 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 think it fell for about six or seven seconds well, so, I, so I your don't judgment do math in means my head. I, your I judgment. Say. Well, as a wizard, you would know, right? Math is good, right? But no, so it dropped for about six or seven seconds. So you'd estimate anywhere from 150 to 200 feet down before it hit. That's an easy flight for you, Ronnie. Yeah, well, it's only 10 feet wide. How long are his wings? I would say well, he's got a 10 foot wingspan. So he could maybe glide down. He couldn't really flap some. Otherwise, his wingtips would be scraping the walls. Oh, okay, then. If he cannot fly in this thing, then let's forget about it. Okay. What do you want to do then? But There's I'm a curious. room just north of me. Let's go that way. Oh, here we go again. Oh, we're still in combat. Yeah. Doing that thing again. It, it, it keeps opening up my character when I click on him to move. I'm like, I don't know why he does that. Why isn't my sheet working? See, that's why I click on mine to move him and, you know, drag him up. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, he moved five feet. So, nope. Come on. Nope, nope. It's opening the character sheet again. On the door. So it is locked, locked, however. It is locked. I don't know. I'm trying to see it. All right. I don't see it. Hey, before we open the door, I have a question, guys. Sure. Don't we have a spell or a potion for our friend so we can do something? No, he, it doesn't no, work that yes, way. No. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like I said, for my house rule, for every one point that you go below zero, you have to spend one day of full rest doing nothing. You can heal yourself magically, but I still require one day for every point below zero. So he went to negative nine. Therefore, he has to endure nine days of no action doing anything until he's able to aid the party. Yeah, no, no problem. I was just asking, maybe like yep, yep. a restora restoration spell. Oh yes, okay, okay. yeah. So yeah, so I would, I would say that if you guys had a full restoration of some kind that you're able to cast on him, not lesser or anything like that, but a full restore, I would give that. Or a wish, if you had a wish spell or something like that, I would give that. Do we? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Uh, do we have that a restoration mm -hmm. spell? Or? Yeah, Ronnie keeps his full restoration right behind his fireball. Okay. <laughs> nice. I'm taking a lot. Okay. Let's go. The door unlocked. The door is no longer locked. You want to open it? 
Raylan, or you want to be here or whatever? What? I don't care. God, why is it doing that? Oh my. You open the door. In a completely bare room, a pentagram surrounded by a circle has been painted in white on the floor in the middle of this room. An amber-colored candle burns at each point of the pentagram. A hunting horn of amber hangs from a peg on the north wall. There is movement in the darkness, and suddenly within the center of the pentagram, you can see there standing a large, ten-foot-tall humanoid creature covered with dull, scaly skin. Its gaunt body is hairless, and I... <clears throat> Ivory fangs protrude from its mouth, and its fingers end in what look like metallic talons. Its eyes glow like smoldering coals, and two huge bat wings grow out of its back. And as you step in, my friends, at last you me, and I shall grant you one wish. Whatever it may be, just free me, and the wish is yours. Can I tell what it is? Um, go ahead and give me a wisdom check, please. Well, you read that book on King, didn't you? You don't know what it is, but you have a sense of evil emanating from it, and Zadkiel likewise says. That thing is pure evil. All right. No. Actually, I should say, I take it back. I forgot you had to roll under. You rolled so well that you realize that this is a high order demon. Um, they are notorious liars. Whoever summoned that summoned it here is must be super powerful because they are extremely powerful. One touch from them can suck the soul from a body. Um, Holy and so shit. So I is, tell everybody. It is currently trapped within the pentagram, but you do know that their power is such that you don't know if he's lying or not. He might be able to grant wishes, but you don't know for sure. We can't trust him. He's a, he's a, he's, he's a shit liar. He's a shit liar. <laughs> <laughs> What's that yeah. horn? You said there was a horn on there the wall? There is a the horn on hanging on the north wall outside well, of the pentagram. One of the, there's not one of the items on that soul, though. It is not. There might be a key or something inside yeah, there. I, I'm going to go, but I definitely will not cross that line. Th there's only one my item friend, in the room? There's my friend, there. where are you going? No, come, let me free. I can... I can see your soul. I can. You grab the horn and leave. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm doing. I, so you take me... the horn. Oh, As you're leaving, he's like, "Come back here! Come back here! Or when I find you, I will feast on your soul. Release me from this place." No thanks. Have a nice day. <laughs> so in your, your hand, door. in your hand, you're holding this old, beat-up tin horn and. Immediately, as you approach Siltal, you see that the horn itself begins to flicker with a magical aura. Put it uh, on your forehead. This is a... It's like a hunting horn. <laughs> but it's curved. It's like a curve, one of the curved horns that maybe you mm. pulled off an elk or something, but it's made of tin. It's shaped like that, but it has oh, a little boom. strap on it. A little strap from where it was hanging on the hook. L l listen, <laughs> listen, Ronnie, we already have a bird. We don't need a rhino. <laughs> what about oh, a there? unicorn? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, well, just hold on to the <laughs> horn. I mean, it's, there was nothing else in the room, right? That so is it's correct. Magic, it's magical and in the glow of a magic of uh, evocation. What, what is it, Sean? Um... Uh, What does it cast? I'll tell you. <laughs> You're so funny. You're so funny. Not really. Uh, I should always like know to have these things on hand. 
um doesn't matter you can tell us later it doesn't matter yeah yeah i'll let you know i'll look it up and i'll let you know but yeah it does definitely uh Now we're going this way. There's two two more doors there. Three more doors. Well, that that door we already. Went it is abjuration magic. I should have known. Abjuration. Yep. That's like conjure. Correct. I don't know. Something like. That. Protection. Could be. Oh, this is a door here. All right, let's check out this other door. It's an oddly square room. <laughs> Everything is square in this castle. Just need to bring Bad Gil down this way. Ronnie has decided to stay up there with the uh, demon thing. No, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Ronnie, do not cross that room. <laughs> no. You find no traps upon the door, but it is locked. Oh, turn me in. Oh By the way, goodness. on the side of the horn, it's inscribed, if found, please return yeah. to Boromir. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Too soon! Too soon! Uh, I see seen on the open lot. What's that? I see seen on the open lot. So, as you are... <laughs> as you are uh, fiddling with it, you hear this... As the door opens. Or as the door is unlocked, I should say. You want to open it, Yeah, everybody gather up in the door. Then you're holding someone. Inside this room, you can see that there is a huge amber colored lion that's like sparkles and stuff sort of flickering oh, off Lord. on him as he tosses his mane. On the back wall, you can see that there are two huge amber colored candelabras that hold these massive uh, candles in them set into the wall. You can see a silver gate of some kind with black uh, or black and, and silver and gold kind of wispy mist on the back side of it set into the arch itself. One left, one right, and one at the keystone. You can see three keyholes. Wow. And that is where we're going to pause for our break tonight oh, okay. so for those that follow i appreciate you guys hanging out hey, with hey. us for a little while Sh Sh yes. sean i had a i was distracted for two seconds what does it say what does this lion say i'm sorry the lion doesn't say anything it's just a oh, amber oh. colored lion but it's like he has glittery sparks sort of flying off him as he sort of sees you guys and he throws his head to the side. You see these little like glittery gold and amber colored sparks sort of fly off him as he <laughs> lets out a lion's roar. Okay, okay. And on the back side of the wall, you guys can see this gate. And in the archway itself, you can see three keyholes. And as I said, though, this is where we are going to go. To our break for tonight so for those of you that uh, follow i appreciate you guys hanging out with us as we are now going to go enjoy the smooth silky sounds of our very own monkey boogers out on his channel and look i got to it and it didn't even have a, a ad or anything so um we normally take 15 minutes usually i don't do it till the bottom of the uh bottom of the hour but because um we are at this point i think it's a good spot for us to uh to kind of hang out so as i said we usually take about 15 minutes or so so go ahead and get yourself a refresh on your drink get yourself a refresh on your snack make sure you come back soon you don't want to miss what's next
Hey guys, spring is here, which means it's time to plant. I'll be heading to my favorite garden center to find all my favorite Proven Winners plants, those beautiful flowers that come in the white containers. I know I can count on them to flourish in my garden since they've been tested for years. I'll also be looking for their self-watering aquapots and fertilizers. Find all the Proven Winners flowers, perennials, hydrangeas, and more that you'll need to grow a beautiful garden this season. You can find Proven Winners at Appenberry's Gardens in Orlando, Florida. Proven Winners, the brand gardeners trust.
Kroger Delivery has one mission, to save you time and money by delivering fresh groceries at great prices right to your door. All right. We'll come back just a few seconds early because I don't want to have to suffer through an advertisement coming from um, from that site. So appreciate everybody that's hanging out with us. We are back for those that are just getting here. Welcome. For those that are hanging out with us tonight, definitely appreciate it as our party continues their investigation beneath the Chateau d'Amberville. Um, our party has entered into the dungeons beneath the chateau, and they have now found what appears to be a gate of some sort with a series of keyholes, three to be exact. And unfortunately, they have four keys. So we shall see what we shall see. But first and foremost, as you guys step into or open the door, you see this um, rather imposing lion. It's amber in colored. Um, ooh. Oh, I got ice cream. I got ice cream. We should have had that on break, but now I can't because so it's just going to sit here and melt next to me while we game for the next two hours. <laughs> but that's okay. So you guys open the door. You see, as I describe this amber colored lion, and as he shakes his mane and roars a challenge in your direction, you see these sort of amber sparks sort of flying off him, highlighted behind him as this uh, silver gate uh, behind which appears to be a cloud of misty smoke of varying colors, blacks, grays, um, ambers in color, just sort of all swirling and misting. The gates are closed in front of it and in each uh, or in three locations, left, r center, left, center, right, and right at the keystone, there are three large keyholes that appear to match the same size of the keys that you guys um possess right now as the Liam, I yelled creature out to the lion and i said mr lion are you guarding that gate or just waiting for us to come open it for you you hear this roar as it leaps toward you guys deglin action uh i'll defend myself with the mace i guess okay and he must not like english obviously not baron or he uh, wants a big chicken dinner <laughs> <laughs> Baron, I'm just going to hang out. Okay. Uh, so tall. I'm going to chop, chop the lion. Okay. Chop, chop. I don't have a stick for him. I'm going to use my spear, DM. Baron. I'm going to turn this one. Trying to hit in before he hit Zad Kill is going to use his sword. All right. As the creature. So what's that yellow oh. thing right next to him, DM? There's a couple of candelabras that are sort of standing there. Okay, that's what those things meant. That is correct. All right, Baron, I am just going to take you out of the uh, initiative. So we don't have to worry about that. Varus, as we begin combat, uh, you turn invisible. Poof. Varus disappears. Sotal. Uh, can I cross my? Uh, yeah, you can. Lift? You can go through and into the room. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want. I want to hit him myself. Okay. Yep. Invisible. So you can. Yep. Him. Okay. Can I attack him when he get close to me? Or what? Yeah, you can. You can uh, um, kind of hold and await your action until he gets there. Yep. Or, or can I get to him and attack him? Well, no, you cannot get to him and do attack. Okay. okay. Uh, wait and attack. Him. Nope. All right. Ronnie Noblite, you see that the creature is not coming out or to the door, and your friends have gone in. So. All right, ten I'm gonna get movement. behind this other tough guy and have my spear, gotcha, pointing out in front of him. Deglin. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, move forward, I guess. Uh, okay. And I can only go ten feet. Yep, you can go ten feet. 
Uh, well, you can go more than 10 feet, you just wouldn't be able to attack. Uh, I think I'll hold my ground. Okay. All right. Red kill, 5, 10. He's actually going to come in here, but he's not attacking because he can't charge. As the lion, now that Zadkiel has arrived, gets his three attacks on Zadkiel. As he gets a soft 20, as he inflicts five hit points of damage on Zadkiel. Let me go ahead. Oops. I have to track Zad kills. So that leaves him there. Okay. Second attack. Hits as well for another six hit points of damage. And now his bite. As his bite hits for oh, eight, cool. eight hit points of damage. All right. That is where we are right now. Back to the top of the order. Same actions everybody's going to do, I'm assuming, um, except for Varus. Varus, you're now going to try to backstab the lion. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say it's it's kind of a tight thing, but I'm going to say that you would be able to go and kind of get right there by where Zadkiel would be um, and be able to backstab it from there. So I'll go ahead and allow that. All right. Anybody want to change up their action before we go any further? Well, if I'm not, I'm go rolling. I'm what would you say, uh, Sotal? I'm going to squeeze him and try to backstab Okay. Him. So, yeah, move me, but you're still going to attack with your weapons, all right? Yes. Okay. All right. As Varus, go ahead and... Go ahead and move and do your attack. I'm trying to hit the computer, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, are you sure to move here? Yeah, you can actually. I'll let you put yourself behind the line because it's 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 yeah. like a foot difference, right? right? So, yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm gonna move you again. That's exactly where you would be, though, if you were to get behind him. Um, I only wanted to do that because Sotal was said he was moving to the left of the line right here. So I just want to make sure that we don't yeah. step on each other. And I don't. There's no bless or anything, right? There is no bless or no additional bonuses to attack or anything like that. Well, other than my backstab. Other than your backstab, yeah. He is in the Paladin Dora. All right. Um, it's armor class. What armor class is that hit? Because his armor class is zero. He's in the Paladin's aura, but the aura is only against undead creatures or, or evil creatures and stuff like that, so. I'm making me. Uh, yep. you need a you need a seventeen to hit it. Well, you know what? Actually, take it back. You need a sixteen to hit it, not a seventeen. Sorry. I need a two plus two I have. Okay. Um, plus two I have. Yeah. What's his so AC? I'm class zero. Zero. And so that gives you the plus one bears. Yep. Roll you your damage. Is he big? Or is he large? Uh, no. Heck, I mean, huh? if you include the length of the tail, he's like nine foot, but the body itself is a, a medium size, so I would not say it fits the, the large creature. 16 hit points of damage. Uh, that's a little bit. I liked it. I like it. <laughs> um, so... Oh, well. Uh, hang on just a second. Okay, <laughs> hang on, give me just a second. I have to look something up really quick. Because I think... You mean you don't have it all memorized? 
You know, I almost had it memorized, and then I said, you know what? It's so much more fun stopping right in the middle of the game and causing a little bit of uh, uh, I'm giving you a hard time. Yeah, I, good. I get, I get, I get that every time I see them. I'm like, you know how many things there are to memorize? No. Well, there's a couple oh, things that I, oh, I had. Oh, to... sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things I just want to check um, just to see for some general. Uh... Want to make sure that was okay. All right, so you did 16 hit points. So uh, yep. let's see, that leaves it with okay. Awesome. Varus is attacking. As you are now visible, as the lion whips its head around, little sparks and things go flying everywhere. Um, it's only for effect though, so it doesn't really do anything. So tall. <clears throat> I'll I'll move uh, to squeeze okay. it. Yep. Uh, not sure if I can backstab it or not. Uh, stay because it's actually focused on Zadkiel. So I'm gonna say yeah. You can get a backstab. Let's go my first attack. Uh, first attack no. fails. Second attack no. fails. Oh my goodness. Third attack yeah. hits for four, 13 hit points of damage. Nicely done. Right. That might be my one chance that I can actually do some damage to the party. Ronnie Noblight, you can reach him. You can reach him with your spear um, without having to close in range if you so desire. That is my goal, DM. Roger that. Eight. Miss. Well, 11. Well, you are... A DM, that, that fine gentleman, Agamemnon, or mm -hmm. what has... Yeah. Yep. No, not that one. A different guy gifted me a... Yeah, he had a nice... He had a, it was a GD 1995 guy. So go ahead and D6 plus 6 plus the spear. So D6 plus 9. So, oh, nice. So that's 9. Well, 15. Nicely done. That's my Zulu strike. I like it. That's your one. That's your, that's your one Shaka Khan. Deglin. All right, I'm going to close to here and attack. Mace. Open. Said it was regular size. Regular size. 17 hits. Yes. Four, 14 hit points of damage. Nicely done. Excelente. As... Zadkiel enters the fray. His first round he gets one, his second round he gets two. So right now he is going to go with his mystical magical blade. Oh that's funny. You guys pummel on this thing as the lion now returns the favor. As he whips around as fast as you've ever seen an animal move, this lion pivots. One of its massive paws strikes out at Sotal. Fortunately, Sotal is able to dodge out of the way as its second paw, before it's even on the ground, its second paw 
targets the now visible um, Varus. Oops, forgot to add my fours. 13. Um, I had to see if a 13 hits. What's your armor class, Varus? <clears throat> I forgot to add the four on it. Zero. I'm class zero. Um, it does. It needed a 10, so it does, in fact, hit you because you got a 13. So his claw is... As Vera suffers five hit points of damage from the claw as it rakes across his body, ripping open part of his front piece of his armor, taking a little bit of skin and uh, blood with it. As he then whirls once again, <clears throat> targeting the paladin as his massive um, maw opens up to bite down on Zadkiel. As he hits Zadkiel for 11 hit points of damage from the bite. Okay. As Zadkiel is down to 30 now. Just so everybody is aware. All right, no um, back to the top of the order. Actions, everybody. Let's uh, start with you, Deglin. Get it again. All right. Uh, Sotal, weapons again. Mm -hmm. Ronnie. Zulu strike. All right. I'm going to mess him. Gil is going to continue with the sword. As we roll combat, Varus, you are up first as the party gains the initiative. Go ahead and roll your attack. Yes, you can. You can. You and Satal are both in position for backstab because its last action was focused on Paladin as that should go. hit. Nice. <sighs> 14 hit points of damage. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, Tal, you are up. All right. Oh, my. Oh, oh. misses. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to kill it. Two misses. Oh, come on. That was the exact same rolls he had last time. Hey, man. Maybe he... Third roll misses. Maybe I cannot kill the lion. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Try to come at me, will you? <laughs> All right. Ronnie Noblite hits with a 14, I believe. His oh, armor class zero. 16, DM. Oh, it's a 16? Thank you. I was just going to check. All right. Well, I am going to use my. I've got a plus three, so I'll drop a plus two in there. Okay. Let me take that away. So now you have a plus one and a plus one remaining. As you do three plus uh, three, six hit points of damage. Every little bit helps. Nicely I done. was sure that was the killer stroke. It should have been, but not quite. Uh, Deglin. All right, go for it. As he attacks first with his blade. Down 17 hits for 7 hit points of damage on his first attack. He rolls again for his second attack. Uh, 9 fails. I gotta double check just to make sure because it's so close. He, got he a has 13. a plus two to hit, did he? I don't think he's counting on. No, it is. He do, no, he do, he doesn't get a plus two. From the sword. Yeah, it's part of the sword attack. Yeah, the, the sword's one's in there. We, well, it's so actually it's a plus three. That's from his strength. I don't know what that plus one is. Uh, I'd have to double check and look, but there is a no. He only gets a plus one from his strength. His damage has the additional, but he's only plus oh. one. So the plus three is a total. And again, we had, to, because of the way this system does and calculates things, we had to finagle things so that we 
we get it in there, but it's actually a total of what he's got there is a four. So actually, I think it's right. It's a plus two, plus three or something like that, right? So he'll get on his damage if he hit. So anyway, he got a 13. Uh, I forgot. He's a seventh level. Just to make sure. Yep, seventh level. Oh, he needs a 14. Let me see what he's got. He's got points. <laughs> he does. He's going to use his plus one, which leaves him a plus three. He's going to do the plus one to hit, so his, now he's able to do his damage. Uh, double check him, make sure. Yep, D8. So he gets a D8 plus his strength plus the sword. So it's a total of plus five. All right, ten more. Nicely done. As you guys continue to beat on this thing, and you're noticing as you guys are slamming on this thing, it's not bleeding, but you're watching solid chunks of amber be sort of blasted off this thing and lay on the floor like little tiny rocks or whatever the case may be. So this ah. thing doesn't even appear to be any kind of like living, breathing creature where it's bleeding, which yeah, you're realizing. Oh, it's a construct. Is it? A, is it a golem? I don't know. You don't know. As the lion... Well, it, takes aim at the paladin with his claws. Oh, darn it, did it again. Yep, yeah, that would have missed anyway. As his second claw attack hits the paladin for 11 hit points of damage. And now it's bite. As its bite hits the paladin, <laughs> two hit points of damage. Are you kidding me? That is the minimum that I can do. All right. As we are back to the top of the order, anybody want to change their actions between now and what we got? I got to take out the lion first. No. Thanks. You're doing nice, Damon. All righty. As we roll for initiative, as the lion goes sensing blood in the water it targets dad kill once again someone's gonna die as it's claw i'll do my best to heal him after 19 hits the paladin for five hit points of damage as the second claw on top of the paladin misses as it whips around at Satal for its bite. This is its bite on Satal. All right, Varus, you are up. Um, so, if I use my nat 20, I can double my best damn dice, right? Yes, correct. Okay. We'll see if I hit. Okay. Uh, from there. Alright, I would like to use my nat 20. Excuse me, his nat 20? Holy shit balls! <laughs> as you <laughs> this thing as you blast into it as it drops down to its haunches, you watch as it shakes his head and roars and staggers back to its feet, not quite done yet. So what? tall so tall, <laughs> you are up. Well, so tall you are up, well, but so it. tall cannot backstab. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Varus, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just saying, we're on it. <laughs> I'm out <of> here. <laughs> Is it amber reabsorbing into it, DM? Like a uh, no, it does not look like it. And so Tal hits for 16, and as he does, slams into the center body as the lion standing up back on his haunches. He slams into it. The lion explodes 
into this massive several chunks of amber that just sort of spray along the floor, leaving what looks to be a pile of rubble all around, leaving Holy you guys crap. alone, standing there, looking all at right. each other like... Zadkiel quickly lays hands upon himself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast a cure serious wounds after he's uh, done. Hang on, just a second. E sure. So that gives him 14 back. All right, that puts him at 21. He had seven left out of 80. Oh my god! I got one cure. Oh, Baron, yeah, you can come in now if you want. Um, I'm, I'm hey, hurt myself, but. I'm only oh, here. I'm only here. Like, right? Yeah, you get to re-roll the one. I'm only here on like 20 or something. 10 points for this all. Make sure to try and think about resting somewhere. I'm tr- Hold on, I'm having a problem with it. Just oh, roll no. a regular dice. I, I, it's not- it, The bottom bar is covering it up, but it's not leaving. Eight sided, right? Yeah, it's an eight. Seven. Seven. So that gives him uh, 13. It was 14. Seven. It was oh, seven. seven and, no, seven. seven. No, seven and six. You rolled, you rolled, you rolled a six and a one. You re rolled the one for a seven. So now ah, you have seven okay. and a six is 13. Okay. All right. That puts him at 34. I have plus one. Hmm? Plus one. Thank you. You are correct. I use them 35. You were right, Daglin. It is a 14. I forgot the plus one. All right. What's next? What do we want to do? How, what What is he up to now? 35 out of 81. Out of 81? Oh, my God. Yeah, we got to... You got to get him higher. I have two cure lights left. I have. We have some potions. We could probably start considering. You know, does he have any of them? I mean, he's as LT as me. Yeah, but out of eighty-one, <laughs> he's, he's supposed to be our tank. I'll drop two cure lights on him. I mean, we have potions on cure. Okay. Yeah. He had, I know he had some on him, and I have some. And... There's some in the magical hole that you see right? okay. Fifteen so DM. Fifteen more for him, okay? That leaves him at fifty out of eighty one. I mean we can uh we can go, we can just rest in here probably. And then play with him like hey, if we want. <laughs> Yeah. Need to sleep. I, you, what you I would to like sleep. to just toot our own horn. Look at how what have we played? Four, five sessions without a single rest? Yeah, we probably shouldn't rest. You know, well, I mean, that was just not if not now you can't spell for it. Well we can lock that door and Yeah. I love not resting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on in, man. And uh, it's locked. Let's shut the door. And I think we ought to at least look at this gated thing here before we try sleeping in here. Well, I, I wouldn't want to mess with it until we're resting. <laughs> it, it's locked by three keys, I think. I think yeah. we should open it after. Yeah, I think we should mess with it after we rest. Let's say you all. Well, I think it's worth investigating. We don't have to put any keys in it or anything. Yeah, we can look around. That's not what it's, We can do that while we're resting. You guys gonna use up all your spells before you uh, rest, or are you gonna just rest? Yeah, if I, if I got any more healings, I'll have it's having a real problem. With it. 
it will not let the pet the taskbar go down. For some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't minimize it. Your computer? Yeah, my computer won't let the taskbar go down. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm wondering. So, I can't look well. I don't know how many spells you have left, but it looks like you have oh, destroy yeah. water. Yeah, the only thing I'd have is like, if you're like purify, remove fear, dust devil, old person, <laughs> silent. I've got spiritual. I've got cure serious wounds on, on scrolls. Spells are yeah, same those. Yeah. And then, um, well, we got. Po I know we got potions. Yeah. Except for myself, I don't know how many he had. Yeah, I have to look. Yeah, unfortunately, Zadkiel doesn't keep anything on his character sheet. Oh, here he's got holy water, but he doesn't have anything on his sheet for like, uh, um, like cure light wounds or anything like that. He doesn't have any of that written down here. So <laughs> I. Yeah, shouldn't he have some? Yeah, I don't remember. Paladin's yep. hit spells and when he. In a long time. <laughs> yep. uh, so again, you guys can cast whatever spells you want, and then you can oh. rest. Or what are we gonna do? I can use my staff of curing. I forgot about it. Yeah. Oh. But does it recharge? Yeah, I can. It recharges. Uh, I have to. It has twenty-four charges currently. When you when you have potions in the treasure. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. There's three cure lights in the. Tre Bag of holding. Yeah, there's some, there's some, yeah, there's some uh, extra healing and regular healing. Probably the ones I bought. So. Let me hit him with the staff at curing. That's uh, that'll do uh, 3d6 plus three. But okay. Again, if I can get my freaking screen to move. Good roll for you. Yeah, roll 3d6 plus three. Yeah. yeah. It means say heal. <laughs> ten to or ten hit points back. I mean to uh, sad kill. So he's at sixty now. And just remember, you can only do each function twice a day with that staff. Right. So oh, I can I do, and I can only hit one person one time. Right. I wonder if it has a re restoration on it. How much, uh, how much is an ember worth? Uh, so as you investigate, um, there is a bunch of chunks of amber that you think you could probably sell to somebody, um, Varus, for about 5,000 gold. We'll put that in the mail. Um, and I should have said, as you're searching through it, you find a scroll inside the uh, the remains of the lion was, and it matches exactly the same scroll you found in the dusty little um, X library. Interesting. Is, does that door lock the... Uh... It does. It was locked to when you guys went to come in, so it can be relocked. So if we open the scroll, it's the same notes? Yeah, it's the same notes. Exactly. Well, no, the, the scribble on the bottom is it, but the, the paragraph at the top is. I relocked it. Okay. So the door is now locked. I see a couple of mirrors, but none of them have been magical, right? Uh... I no, I don't no, none of them you guys have mirrors, but nothing has been magical now. I wonder if that sword is is one of the ones from in you know, the night upstairs on the lion mother. Uh sword. Oh. No, we just got that sentient box. Uh, yeah. That's the only one you guys had was the one that um, Sultal what, has. What was? We're not just trying to figure out what the item. 
What, what, was, the, what was the name of the guy? Oh, Richard? The lion? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So that's not the... That's not the name on, on the notes. Did you try healing me or... Uh, or not yet? No, I haven't tried healing anybody, oh, okay. but... Are you saying you're right? down. Using another charge on, on him? I, I can. Before we okay. go to sleep. Uh, I'm just asking. You guys, you got 23 charges left, right? Yep. Keep tra track of that. All right, so... 3d6 plus 3 to Varus. <clears throat> oh, I have to re-roll the 1. Re-roll <laughs> the other 1. Jeez. Oh my God. <laughs> what the hell? There you go. 17 hit points back for Varus. That uh, helps. <laughs> Wow. anything back. <laughs> All right, the staff of curing is done for today. Well, at least for that, yeah. Can't do any yeah, more I'm healing most, with that. Gotta take I'm, mo card. I'm most, mostly healed now. I'm only down one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to so. take a long rest then? Yes. Uh, sounds good to me. Okay. If you guys are interrupted in your sleep, as everybody can now recharge their spells, everybody gets one hit point plus their constitution bonus back. I'm going to heal. So that means Zadkiel, he gets plus one. Well, he doesn't get anything on his con, so he, he's at 61 now. So he's, he's down 20, but he's, at least he's, he's healthy enough. Oh, it looks like I get a net 20 from, uh, one of my... What? <laughs> the DM. I should go to the DM. It's like don't six on one. It's like six <laughs> on one. Don't listen to him. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't listen to him <laughs> can't believe okay appreciate that uh gd man that's awesome thanks for the support brother all right now then it's back to the task at hand are we leaving going to other rooms what are we doing we are playing for heat we want we want to see if we can find these items i mean yeah. there's a vault you don't want to you want to open it well, we don't know where it is. It's a like, heat. Uh, th th that's what's interesting. I yeah. think it's a storage chest or something valuable. I mean, it might be. But if it takes three keys, then we're back to one. Well, I doubt it consumes the keys. I mean, maybe not. What you don't want me to do? I think we should use the three keys that we found before we got in here and got the fourth in those holes. I mean, all the key looks looks the same. Everybody. Well, they all, they all look the same, right? We've been yes. Finding, yeah, they're pretty much identical. Finding a lot of them. <laughs> pretty much identical. Um, I will look. I will examine the the keyholes and the. Okay. Uh, in the, in the mirror and heat or whatever it is. Okay. Um, anything particular you're looking for, like for traps, as a uh, find or move traps, or just yeah. a search search a search check? I'm, I'm looking for traps, and I'm also looking for any clues on how to make it work. Okay. Go ahead and give me a find or move traps. I need any writing or whatever. Yeah, there's no writing or anything, um, but you do find very faint arcan ba arcana based inscribings all over the gate itself. Um, the keys themselves look, from all intents and purposes, what you can see, a typical lock and key mechanism. You can't see 
how they work necessarily, um, but you can tell that it it's a a standard lock and key. It just happens that the keyhole is in the um, embedded through the um, metal and stone of the gate itself. Uh, Barrett, come over here and see if you can decipher. Uh, I'm gonna use green light with you. My uh. My TV and ability, which wants okay. me to read magical language. Okay. So you look through, and, and it's, oh, it's, it's you, you <laughs> can, you don't know what the words mean, but you get the intent that it, it is, um, protective, uh, type of magic, like abjuration type of magic, as mm. well as well. Oops. I had that up, and now I forgot. I had it up once, and then I, I put it back down. Hang on. Give me a second. Oops. I hate when I do that. Is there a, a picture of the gate? No, I don't have a picture of the gate now. I was uh I'm just looking for the, the school of magic. I had it up before and then I forgot and then I didn't write it down, so uh let's see. I think I know what it is, but I just want to confirm based on whatever. There we go. Um, yeah, it's like a sort of a, there's protective magics involved as well as conjuration magic involved. Well... And Baron, you know that conjuration magic can be magic that is allows people to move from point A to point B across the same plane or even interplanar. Baron. Yeah, you're talking on mute, brother. There you go. Wait, so what? I'm confused now. So, no, so, um, Varys, um, investigated the, the writings and stuff. He found, or he investigated the gates and he found like uh, arcane scribblings on it. So he asked you to kind of check it out too while he was checking it out. And he was able to determine that the, as well as you are able to determine that the, the scribblings are magical in nature. Um, and they deal with protective magic as well as conjuration type magic. And as a magic user, you know that conjuration type magic um, can deal with things that move people across spots from point A to point B within the same plane. And some more powerful spells allow you to use the same type of magic to travel between planes. So, what do we want to do? I got no clue, to be honest. Open I'm bad at this. Well, good. Why we're here? To learn. Yeah. So, All right. You guys have four keys. There are three keyholes um, that match yeah. about the size. Varus, you've looked at it and determined it does not appear to be... Um, anything strange yeah. it's a typical lock and key yeah. mechanism you just don't know how they work necessarily uh well um three people wanna they wanna try and turn them all at once yeah, right. at, you at, the at the same time let's do a calm down three two one that's what i like to hear we need to launch the missiles are you going to be willing to turn yeah. the key when the time comes i have no russian <laughs> <laughs> I have a Twilight 2000 game in some point. <laughs> nice. All right. So as you guys um, insert the keys. Yeah. Click, 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 and they fit perfectly. They don't lock in place or anything like that, so you're able to withdraw the key even if you All put right. it in or pull it out. Um, but they fit perfectly, and, and they lo sort of 
fit perfectly into place as you, Siltal, or I should say as Vera, Siltal, and Baron each have their hand on a key. How do we want to do this? Turn them all at the same time. Turn them all at the same time? Okay. Let's turn at one. Three, two, one. <laughs> Blink. The keys turn. There's this flash of light, and suddenly you hear this creaking sound as the gate sort of swings open into the room. Opening up, you see the mist begins to fade slightly, and you can see through a shimmering wall of energy or light that on the other side of the gate is some sort of a forest clearing. What the actual F? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know where that is. <laughs> DM, do I look like I recognize the forest? You do not. It looks like a standard typical forest, though. It doesn't appear to be anything strange or unusual. The grass appears green. You see some wildflowers and various flora and fauna that you are most familiar with, but the region itself is completely foreign to you. Why don't you go and talk to a tree? So does it look like a gate DM? It appears to be some kind of a gate, yes. So the, the steel gate, the physical gate, unlocked with the use of the keys and it swung inward. What used to be this sort of misty veil sort of faded away. And now there's this sort of this shimmering kind of an energy... Um, that makes it like you're looking through water, like wa on the other side, there's like looking through the backside of a waterfall, if you will, right? It's kind of what I, it reminds me of, very pale light. Um, but on the other side, you can quite clearly see what appears to be a forest. Um, and I should say there's a nearby off to the right, there's like a little stream or creek running through a, a crevice in the earth um, from north to south or front to back, depending upon your direction sense. Uh, I'm going to pull out an acorn DM and throw it in there. Hey, thanks for that, Lando. I appreciate that. That is awesome. Thanks, man. You throw an acorn and you watch as it, it there's this, like this little tiny flash of light with some shimmering like um, amber colored fireworks or sparks that kind of give off no sound or anything, it's all silent, but the acorn passes through the veil and you watch as it hits the hard earth on the other side and it sort of bounce um, uh, to the uh, ahead. Suddenly, out of the grass, you see like a fowl of some kind just take off as this acorn apparently startled it as this bird that was sort of hidden off to the side just out of your vision. Um, again, was startled by the acorn you threw, and it takes off and flies away. Well, gents, should we step into that pocket portal? Well, well if it doesn't... It does for a reason, yeah, so... If it, yeah, if it doesn't free us, then, you know, we might be might be sent somewhere else, but let's do it. Yeah, well, or when you we can can we give a word about breaking the hood? And tell we might can we what? Might not uh I'm sorry, I missed what you wanted to know about the curse. No, I right. said can we give a word about his impalement might have an issue me in a moral dilemma than he um, is. I don't necessarily know that you gave word. I think uh, it was it, just... Well, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to trying to think. Yeah, I know. I just think that all he said was that you guys are promised that you will like help break the curse or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Right? So, you know, to free them and, and whatnot, right? That's kind of his word that he gave, but this is obviously part of it um, uh, because as you guys, if you go back and you read, um, if you read the thing, it says 
The secret that will break the curse surrounding Chateau d'Amberville and lift the gray mist is engraved on the inside lid of Stephen Amber's casket. To summon Prince Stephen's tomb from beyond space and time, four magical items are needed. The four items, the enchanted sword, the viper-circled mirror, the ring of Ibon, and the potion of time travel can all be found in Alvaron, our old homeland. Touch the ring, the viper's tail, anoint the sword with the potion, shatter the mirror with the sword, and the Prince Stephen's tomb will appear. Right? So... Oh, yeah. And this is not... This is not their homeland. Because they're trapped in this... Correct. So you had to leave the castle to travel to their homeland to now well, find the four... Right away to that world. Right. Mm. This might be their homeland, or you might be going back to Greyhawk. You don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Anyway, well, I need, either I, way, we're good. So. I, yeah. I need some fresh air, and I cross. All right. You guys watch as um, Sotal sort of steps through the gate. This energy sort of flows around him. Sotal, you feel this huge sense of vertigo, and, and then suddenly, um, as your face is passing through, it's almost like somebody grabs you by the front of the shirt and jerks you forward at a thousand miles an hour. And you feel again, this sense of vertigo as you stumble forward. Uh, you don't lose your balance, but suddenly this fresh air just sort of flows around you and you hear the bur the sound of nature and wildlife sort of um, immediately just appear. And as you catch yourself and you whip and look around, the gate you just stepped through is nowhere to be seen. I I uh, turn around and I motion. Can we see him? Don't, don't. You guys see him. You can see I, him I, on the other side. He's sort of like waving and telling you guys. And then I point my eyes and I, I point at you and I I motion no. Like, <laughs> I, I say, hold on. Ah, oh, man, do I have a piece of paper? Do I have any parchment? Oh, everything but an ink quill. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm stepping. Right. I mean, we, I mean, we have to step through because we don't want, we don't, we, we don't, we have find these things anyway to make the house. Yeah, yeah I'm going, I go through. I, I, I take, I take a rope out of my uh, uh, backpack and I uh, motion. I is anybody not stepping through? Ryan right. Noblight, are you stepping through? I'm what? stepping through. <laughs> All right. Deglin, are you stepping through? Yes. Baron, are you uh, stepping through? Yes. Zadkill, are you stepping through? No, yes. I promised them that I would free everybody. <laughs> you guys go, I'll see? wait here. <laughs> did you see what the night kill us did? <laughs> In the chat? All right. Oh, wait, sorry. What I do? What I miss? Did you see what <laughs> Monkey yeah, said yes. Yeah. Oh, Monkey's one, finally two, here. Three, four, five, six. <laughs> he gave us six nat twenties. Who did? <laughs> Monkey. Monkey did. Monkey. <laughs> can't do it. Monkey can't do it. Sorry, man. All right. Yeah, what I am going to, to do, what I am going to do, because Monkey's in an unusual situation, he cannot give nat nat twenties to either group because he's in both groups. But what I am going to do is I am going to give, um, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. monkey, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one for everybody. I'm going to give everybody a plus two onto their, their characters. Oh, that's good. That'll help. So DNL and, uh, has a plus, plus five and a plus, and a plus one. So tall, you now have a plus four. Deglin, you have a plus five and a plus two. Uh, Baron, you have a plus four and a plus five. Ronnie, you have a plus three and a plus one. Varys, you have a plus three. And Zadkiel has a plus five. One, two, three, right four, there. five, six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. I had a lot of work I had to do. It's all good, man. It is all good. As you all, you all, you as you all step you through the gate. Yeah, you were down to seven hit points. Um, as you guys step through the gate, 
as I explained to Sultala as he stepped through, you feel this little sense of vertigo, a tingly sensation as your body passes through this shimmering portal of light. These little sparks of energy, of amber-colored energy, sort of swarm around you guys like fireflies in a night sky. And then it's like somebody grabs you by the front of your tu tunic and jerks you forward at a thousand miles an hour. It's like almost snapping your spine, taking your breath away, causing a sense of like falling, like like if you're jumping off a cliff or going on a roller coaster over a hill as your stomach sort of raises up and you all stumble forward through, almost crashing into Sotal. Sotal, as you're looking like you don't see anybody and you're like kind of waving and suddenly all these bodies come like stumbling forward, you almost tumbling into you and it takes you like by surprise, even though you're expecting them to come through the speed and, and the velocity of which that they've come through and kind of almost crash into you as everybody goes stumbling forward, your stomachs sort of settle down. And as you stop and look around, you find yourselves on a road with, uh, why is this not working? Hang on just a second. You guys find yourself not in a row, but you're, still, you, you're standing in like this forested area. And uh, why is this? You're here. Darkness falls across the land. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to have to do everybody individually because I it's not. Starting trailer. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> So, I mean, I prefer this place anyway. Just a second. For some reason, I don't think I did what I was supposed to do on the map. So, I have to go here. Doop, doop. That's why. Doop, doop, doop. Now, everybody should be able to see. Uh, what did I miss? That's okay. Oh. Bro. Take that. Dude, man, that's awesome. Cool. I definitely appreciate that, man. So you guys find yourself sort of standing on in this on this little forested hillock. Um, you can see that down to the west you can you there's this like a uh, oh it's not really a full fledged road per se, although it is more like a track, but it is a road. So you can see that it has a lot of use and it's running north and south. Off to your east, you can see there is a small, uh, what looks to be, I'm sorry, uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah, um, off to the east, you can see there's sort of a stream uh, running along the countryside. Um, now, that being said, this map, um, as I move, I want you to look at the distances when I go to move you guys on a map just so you can see. Um, each hex on here is about six miles. So that tells you you're going to have to use a little bit of that um, imagination. Right now, all you see is forest. You don't a forest, a road, and a stream. You don't know anything about towns. You don't know anything. You can't see anything on the map as far as um, places on the map, if you will, right? So right now, all you guys can see is this forested domain and i have a single token on here for the whole party um and i will move the token as the party tells me where they want to move to does right. the water stream go down or up so the water appears to be flowing from north to south well mm -hmm. I, su I suggest that if we're to move we follow the water well how about there we is have or the road in? Or have we're, we're on a road here. Have the June scan ahead? Yeah, he's got the wings now, right? So. Which way you want to hear, uh, north or south? Oh, that's oh, true. Well, I was just looking on the map and reading those scroll notes. Well, we don't know where any of these We don't, yeah. we don't see them. Well, I could just. Well, I can try and use my wings and fly up and see if I can find locate or see a city or a town or something like that so as you look you realize that you no longer have your wings oh <laughs> and, and, and i will also note 
that Baron appears to be fully healed and ready to go. His oh, wounds oh, no, no. his wounds have been healed. Oh. Nice. Got our feel? mage back. Outstanding. Magic like, mage. Spells right away. Or... Well, why don't we just follow the road we're on either north or south? It doesn't matter which one we go to. Uh, do, you, do I still is have it, the sword? Is it daytime or is it? Yes, you still have the sword. Right. Um, it is probably from based on what you could tell. Um, it's it is a cloudy day, but um, it is fairly bright, so you're probably thinking midday. Uh, you don't see the oh. actual sun. It is cloudy out. So, Ronnie, I think me and you should take points as we're like sons of the forest i mean you more than i but at the same time i'm from a forest also but i'll follow you Ronnie, wherever you you want to go with it i'm the free i am too all right yeah i just think we should go. Go. <laughs> yeah that's that's all go take points together and just decide where you want to go Ronnie. so normal movement um Normal movement goes at the slowest, the pace of the slowest person. And the pace of your slowest person right now is your paladin because of the armor and, and stuff like that. Um, his movement is 60, so that means you guys can move a total of um, six miles per day. No, I take it back. I'll do it 12, 12 miles a day. You guys can go. So you go two hexes per day is your, is your, your movement speed. Do have that folding boat? That this is true. You do have the folding boat that you could probably put in the water and travel at a speed of twenty-four. Yeah, we should, yeah. Until we can find some horses, let's uh, let's use the boat and go, go north or south along the river. Well, going upstream would be kind of hard, depending on depending on how fast the current. Yeah, but we can go downstream and see if we can. Yeah. Find a, a settlement and buy or steal some horses. Sure. That's the best plan. Yeah, we got plenty of horses. We'll try to buy. Let's try to buy. And, yeah. We well, yeah. don't, don't know the lay of the land here yet. We well, yeah. If we check the road, do we see any, like, is it a, a dirt road? Yeah. Can we tell if there's, like, recent travel? Uh, the road itself looks like it is well traveled, right? So it's not like it's, um, it's just not like paved road or anything like that. It's like wilderness road, right? So it looks like wagon. Okay, but it's not just one of these. It's an older road, right? It looks like something you would find in the. Uh, in the hills and it's whatnot. Not, it's not a Roman road. Right. That's standard road. A hobbit road. Let's call it that. Well, let's use the boat. Best plan. I think it'll, we'll move faster with the boat. We don't. Okay. So a movement of 24... That is 24 miles a day, basically. So, one, that's like eight hexes a day. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, about eight hexes a day. Each hex is six miles. So, how fast is the current? Um, don't know. You guys haven't got down there yet, but assuming well, you get down there, it's a lazy river. It's not like really big, um, it's a wide stream. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like boats could go up and down it, but not not like it's not a shipping lane or anything like that. Right. But your your boat is more flat bottom, so it it is enough to uh, it is enough to or it's flat enough that you guys could um, put it in the water and and ride this this river, right? Because it's like I said, mm -hmm. the water's not super deep. It's not really fast moving. It's just like a stream. A little bit wider than a normal stream, I guess. 
Okay. Well, let's do that. Then. It's got, we got to move one hex over to get to the water itself. Okay. So it takes you a few minutes to get down as you guys move over to the uh, uh, to the waterway, um, moving over to unload your boat um, and placing it in the water. You guys all um, pile in and begin to move south, I, I think you said. Okay. All right. So as we move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't, we don't see it. Nope, you don't see anything there as you're passing by. As you guys are passing through this region, um, the forest um, becomes thick and very boggy. So there's, it's almost like a fen. Um, and so it's very smelly, very muddy, very old, um, not evil looking at all, but it's just like your typical marsh bog. Um, after about an hour or two hours of travel, you guys finally break free of the bog and continue your way down. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and move it all the way just so we can continue yeah. along on our venture. Eventually... You can see up in the distance what appears to be a walled town of some sort. The stream um, that you are that you guys are on appears to go right up um, to that city. Um, is there a, a boat gate, or is it just? Um, so, oh, hang on just a second. I have to look at the problem with this is it doesn't uh, doesn't have numbers on here I have to go back and look at the the map that I have shown here doesn't give uh, okay I have to do two separate maps I have to do the, the map with the numbers on it and then the map that you guys are seeing here it doesn't have numbers but I need to put numbers on it but all right um, you guys are um, when you when you start to pull up to this town again you see it's it's a large town it's not like a super huge city not nothing at all like the megapolises that you've seen from Gryrax or any of the other super large cities but this is a large walled town um you can see that there is no kind of boat gate as the stream sort of appears to disappear underground as it gets close to this city you can see that the walled gates themselves are large wooden structures with wooden towers that are sort of uh um the uh are, that are just kind of like the old west forts i guess um <clears throat> with the gates or the the wooden um walls going all around walls themselves are probably about 60 or not 60 about 30 feet high the towers may be a little bit taller than that. Um, you can see that there are guards sort of manning, and there is some traffic, looks to be farm traffic of some sort, um, coming in. Um, what's interesting, as you guys can see, there are actually signs outside the gate that appear to be like signs that have words and numbers on them, but you can't quite see what it is from the... Uh, um, from the river or from the stream. I guess we stop the boat and yeah, we'll okay. stop the boat. Put it back on the. Hey guys, I I, I just have to say something. Uh, what should we tell people people from town from this town? What are we looking for? I mean, this is weird. Like, I, I don't think we can say that like, that the king is dead and he's trapped in the eternal. No, let's just say that we're on a quest to find certain holy items, and that would be. Well, I, I think this. I think just trying to find the the places that are named where the items are, and then go from there. Yeah, that's. Or uh, and we gotta find them. And speak our language. We're lost. Yeah, we're lost, and we in the map, I guess, right? We need to know where we are. Yeah, we can use a, a map with me, right? 
Yeah, and, see if and the map horses, is horses, supplies. Okay. So let's Wait. find the front gate and. Okay. So as you guys um, uh, approach the the main and what appears to be the only gate, you can see that the signs are actually signs of direction. One of them says paragon and it's like 78 or 80 right pointed off in this direction up here and as you get to the main gate you can see that the river or the stream continues on the other side of town um, looks like it goes under the town maybe or maybe they just built the town on top of the river but it um, it appears on the other side of town and it continues on but you can see there's a small tertiary road running to the northwest right here there's little little dots right here that's yeah. a tertiary oh, yeah. trail and it says paragon in that direction and then it says um Vion running straight um to the north the, so this large trail that you guys saw going north Vion. um it says Vion. yes it's the, that's one of the words that's in yeah and the scroll oh, so the city here going. says, Welcome to Zymes. Hey, um, Wizard. Let's turn it out and make Or I, I should say, oh, how, do we, how do we pronounce this, Olivier? Well, exim, exim, well, that's a, it's not a French name. So okay, well, I wasn't for sure Zimus. if it had a certain. So, Zemus is what Zimus. we're going to call it. Welcome to Zemus, X I M E S. That's also in the scroll. And it says, uh, for the potion of time train. And it says, uh, Les Hibbo and Azadarak. Jihan. Azadark. Azadark. Ass is dark. Okay. <laughs> well, we probably want to. Well, then we want to meet Newt's then. Yeah, let's, let's meet this. Let's start. John a map. <laughs> Let's go meet this Astark guy. He knows anything about a potion time trap. Okay, so you guys get to the front gate as the guards. Welcome to Zemus. State your business. <clears throat> so he speaks our language. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, we are here on behalf of our friends and Kind of identify some places. Tom is one of the places that we're looking for. Well, you have there. found it now. State your business for being here. State your occupations. Ah, well, I'm a cleric of uh, God. Oh, we're you traitors. A... <laughs> oh, traitors. There is much need for many goods and services. I think you will do well here to establish shops. And you, uh, sir, you should you should visit the bishop. The bishop of Zemus is always looking for men with which to bolster the clergy of this town. Ah, oh. maybe that would be nice. Yeah, where is he at? He is at the chapel. Okay. His Holiness as a dark is always taking visitors. Ah. Oh. That's a dark. That's a... okay. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Let's go in. All right. As you guys sort of state your name, business, occupations, as traders or whatever the case may be, you enter into the town. It is a small town. The culture appears to be very different here. Um, whereas in other places you've been, such as Gryrax. Uh, some of the other cities and towns that you guys have been um, fortunate enough to even Hamlet, right? <laughs> You've seen various signs of of creature comforts, let's say, whereas this place has none. For example, um, guys walking by and snapping their fingers in the lamps lighting, right? Or ever burning torches and whatnot. You see none of that here. Um, it's almost as if magic doesn't exist in this oh, place. 
Um, and so you're not really sure. Um, although the, the soldier at the gate realized what a cleric is, obviously a holy man, a priest of some sort. Right. Um, and so, uh, walking through town, you can see that it's around a central kind of a hub, a marketplace toward the center of town on the far end of town on the east side is a large cathedral looking building very official looking buildings all around it so that appears to be perhaps the government section of town um, there are the standard things that you might find in any town you know inns taverns stuff like that hmm. well do we want to go see this acid art guy first and and then go search the town or search the town first and then go I think we should get familiar with the area a little bit and the customs. We don't want to do something and, you know, be considered heretics or something. And sure. As we, know, as we know from dealing with the people that were the Emmer yeah, yeah. family, that they have a different society. They only had one god. Yeah, they believe in only one God, so we don't want to be doing things that are going to be getting us hung or something. So when we mention our God, let's, let's just say God. Yeah. <laughs> they would not yeah. know the difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we can see him out, um, you know, hitting some supplies or horses so we can travel on the roads. Yeah. And not no. But I think this no, is one of the this is. is one of the stops that we need to find. The, the, is it well, the, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I mean, signs as acid art and yeah, we have to figure that out. Yeah, but we want to we want to pretend to be what we're pretending to be before we, you know, break that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's go have a drink. Can't hurt to have a drink, right? Yeah. Find get the, some, the get some, get some food. Yeah, get some food and uh, information. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys, several different, um, several different places in town um, that could be right. You see the Early Bird Inn, right, is one that you guys see. Poor Merchants Inn, um, the House of Pots. Um, uh, looks to be maybe a, a some sort of a, a dining facility. Um, so are we looking specifically for um, the uh, like a, a tavern, or do we want like an inn so we can actually sleep and stay and whatnot? I'm thinking a tavern. Okay. Um, so probably one of the first ones that you <laughs> that you guys come through. <clears throat> and by the way. An interesting note as you guys are walking through, you don't see any dwarves, you don't see any halflings, you don't see any half orcs, you don't see any elves, you don't see any oh. like <laughs> half elves. Not that they're not there, you just haven't seen Fuck them in my place. Yet. Um, and as you, you walk do. by, um, a, a place that catches your eye because it sort of stands out different than what you're taking this place to be. A place called the Blind Witch. And from inside, you guys can hear the sound of music and laughter and all the standard normal signs that you guys have come to identify with when it comes to, like, taverns and whatnot. Blind Witch it is? <laughs> what are you I'm just saying? <clears throat> right, so. We're just looking to gather intel, so... Spelling it up to the bar and listening in on people's conversations. Okay. Um, so you guys go um, to stepping into the... Uh, oops, wrong one here. Um, stepping into the, uh, the inn, you know, the music sort of catches you guys. Um, you can see that standard fare, um, bar, tables, folks sort of singing and laughing and, and stuff. 
As you guys sort of step through the door, it kind of gets quiet. As people sort of look around. As the door sort of swings open. Just stand there. There's a few people kind of whispering. <laughs> a few people kind of whispering. Like, look. And then somebody like leans over to his friend and looks in your direction, looks back to his buddy and whispers and like touches his ears and kind of looks. Oh, shit. Yeah. Kind of looks tell the in your direction. Ears. Um, it only lasts for a few seconds or so. Um, and then the sounds sort of begin to fade into what they were, albeit a bit more subdued um, than they were when you guys first arrived. Um, but you can see that the place, although it is well populated with patrons, there are several places uh, should you guys want to go kind of sit and hang out. I'm actually going to start dancing when the music ah! come back up. <laughs> I take my cloak out and uh, I start dancing a little bit. And like okay. jump around a little bit. Some people, people start clapping a little bit, and whatnot. And as you ding by, you hear the distinctive sound of a coin ting as it bounces off the floor near your feet. And you look down, and somebody has tossed a copper piece. As and you as I dance, I show my huge freaking my books, you know, <laughs> my <laughs> my bag of gold, and I. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't see that. something else. All right. Of them, yeah. Okay. And then um, I go sit next to a pair of ladies if I see some. Okay. Um, that's fair enough. There are, there are some female patrons in here, but most of them are with other men. You don't see any women just sitting around by themselves. Oh. Um, they appear to be in the, uh, the company of men. So sitting at a table next to them, they sort of smile and kind of look and blushingly turn back to their to their male friends um and i call uh, drinks for everyone immediately immediately the crowd goes wild um as everybody's clapping and cheering and um uh, people are like slapping you on the back saying thank you um it's going to cost you 57 gold to pay for all, all right. of the drinks of everybody in the room. Perfect. That's a very expensive. Uh... As <laughs> yeah. as you're sitting there, uh, what are the rest of you doing while uh, Sultal is? Go get my free drink. <laughs> All right, joining Sultal at the table. Oh, for having you food. Um. Uh. Yes, they do have a uh, small bar type fare, mostly like chicken wings and French fries and stuff like that. Right. So just. Just small, small eats. Nothing, no big heavy meals, but cheeses, no. fruits, dried, dried meats. Um, fish and chips. Uh, uh, yeah, we could chicken. probably scare up some fish and chips or something like that. Um, I want some chicken wings. I, I, I'm gonna eat them as I watch the, the druid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I want. I want. I want acorn pie. I'm going to scarf me down some acorn pie. Ronnie, they're yeah. picking on you, man. That's okay. Yeah. Going so as you... Yep. Yeah, as you guys sit, um, people begin to sort of take in, you know, that you're there and it's it's a real deal. And you sit and you order your drinks um, every so often, every so often, somebody comes by to tap you on the shoulder, um, so tall, and thank you for the drinks. Um, eventually, there's a boy that sort of slides up to your table, and he just stares, I mean, literally stares right at the the side of, of uh, Varus's head. He just standing there and... <laughs> <laughs> you sort of catch him out of the corner of your eye when you look, Varys. You know he's there, but you don't just want to, like, whip your head because you know he's a youth. He's probably 10 years right. old, maybe. And as you sort right. of turn... As he sort of turns... You turn your head and you see this boy, and he's he just sort of cocks his head. And Did some evil wizard turn your ears like that, mister? No. No. I was... I was born 
this way and I come from a long journey to train goods for your people. My horse died, so we had to take a boat down the river. Um, do you know a good, uh, people? So well, I might prepare a, a fine mount. Well, I suppose if, if probably in the market, um, they they sell horses over there all the time. My paws, my paws, doesn't like do that, but you know we take care of the inn pretty good. But I, they sell horses in the market oh, all the time. He runs the inn. That's good to know. I slip okay. him. Uh, Piece of silver and we he can. looks at you and his eyes go like wide. Gosh, thanks, mister. And he runs away before you can take it away because it looks like he's probably uh, been teased that way. You were going to say something, so tell I'll let you get it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does he grab the silver? Oh, yeah. He's like, it's just. I, I, I show him a gold. He goes hey to now. grab the silver. I, I'm still my friend. And I say. <laughs> And I say, if you can find us a map of this region, I'm going to give you 10 of these. <laughs> uh, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody got that much gold, mister. I I put them on the table. One of like uh, in a line. Are you a king? <laughs> in his own mind. In my own mind, I am. And maybe you can be the king of the, of the village also with all this gold. There might be these. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> so the boy agrees and he'll try to find you a map that would uh, at least give you the main towns in the region. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we bring tonight's episode of 1E1 Shots to a close. I cannot tell you mu enough how much I appreciate everybody that's hung out with us tonight. Troy, if you're still out there, thank you so much for dropping the bombs. Bunky, dude, man, that was totally unexpected, but totally appreciated. Um, I don't know what we do to deserve the support that you guys give us, but don't forget, go out there, tell your friends, family, countrymen let them know who we are let them know we're here every monday night every other friday night uh same bat time same bat channel um that being said we are not gaming this coming monday i should say next monday we are not gaming next week because i will be in south carolina visiting my grandchildren over the easter holiday and i oh, don't i was oh, that's cool. i was hoping to be back we were gonna we're leaving monday but it's like a nine hour drive that usually becomes a 12 hour drive because I'm taking my mom with us. And so mm -hmm. um, it's just a little bit longer because we stop more stuff like that. Right. So even if, you know, if I were to leave first thing in the morning, I doubt I'd be back in time. So I just want to call it now. Probably we are not gaming next Friday. I mean, next Monday we will be gaming. Well, you know. Yeah. We will be gaming you know. the, the Friday. Stop. <laughs> Um, Troy, um, I'm just thinking what you can do is I'm going to give the keys to the car to, uh, Lando. So Lando can come here and run a game and you can come drop bombs on Lando. How's that? <laughs> so, um, Lando's always doing something, man. So if he's not gaming with oh, us on I Monday, games. yeah, from, he's from playing with me. There you go, man. So if, if we're not here gaming, then you can go drop bombs on Lando because Lando games like every single night of the week. So I think this is the only time he gets to play as opposed to... to no, he read like, my mind because I was going to suggest he take over your game and, you know, he gives all our stuff and, and he come back, we're all packed. You know? Yeah. I take back all the nice shit that I said about Monkey. I just want to say. Oh. <laughs> Stop, <so. laughs> just kidding. Um, but what I'm going to do now is, uh, like I said, I'm going to shift over to After Party. I kind of touched on it a little bit. Now, if you guys got a bail, I definitely uh, understand... If you have not joined our Discord, I encourage you to hit our Discord so you can join us uh, in the chat. I haven't done this in a while, and I don't even know do our new guys know. But if you go to our Discord channel, 
and jump down to the uh, voice channels. Now, I have a voice channel in each one of my games, like obviously you know this one. But if you go all the way to the scroll, all the way to the bottom, the voice channels, there's the open channel. I'm getting ready to bounce over there. Um, so if you guys want to join us on Discord, hit our Discord, come in, the open channel for chat. You guys can join and shoot the breeze with us. Um, but I'm going to do that uh, now. So I did talk a little bit before um, when we were first uh, starting up. Um, hang on a second. I got to close all this down. So. It'll be bugging the crap out of me. Um, I, I did want to talk about one of the things I was going to talk about. First of all, if you guys are bailing, I check you, <clears throat> check you next time, Lando. See you next time. Um, for those that came across, hello. Looks like it's just me and Iger, so that's okay. Um, so we'll see you, monkey. Hey, man, appreciate you able to come in. I know you weren't able to do much because of work, but that's okay. Uh, you did enough by dropping the bombs on us. Um, but what I did want to talk, um, the one thing I was interested in, um, was for those that have been seeing me sipping on my cup all night, um, wait till, uh, wait till it kind of shows here. There we go. Uh, I can get my, move this over, just kind of rearranging stuff here so I can see what's going on. So I went and saw, um, Dungeons and Dragons last night. Um, didn't want to see it. Well, I did want to see it opening night, but we couldn't see it opening night because, you guys make me show up in game. So I had to come oh, game. Uh, um, so we uh, we looked at doing it Saturday. My son has homework, um, which, by the way, he's on the dean's list again. He's got two more two more semesters, technically. He's got a summer and a fall, and then he'll have his degree. And then maybe he can go out and, and do work that he really wants to do. So here's knocking on wood, hoping that. So... Long story short, we decided uh, Sunday, let's do that. And so last night we went out and we saw the D&D &D movie. A um, couple of my players asked me on Discord, what did I think of the game? Or think of the uh, the movie. Um, I will say as movies go, I didn't think it was great, great. Um, I think as D&D &D movies go, it was okay. Um, I, I think, and, and if there's any spoilers out there, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll try not to give like big time spoilers other than what you may have seen in, in, uh, teasers and, and trailers and stuff. Yeah. Um, number one, I thought the depiction of, of the Druid was good and bad. The good is I really loved the, the fact that they let the Druid do a lot of the wild shaping um, at will. Um, I don't know, like I know five E. Okay. I, there's a lot of rules I don't know, but I don't know what the rules are when it comes to D and D and the Druids wild shape, how many times they can do it per day and yada, yada, yada. Right. I do know that they can't become owl bears. Okay. At least my understanding yes. is they can't. Magical right. Creatures were yes. Off so, but the depiction of the owl bear was great. <laughs> the only downside that I felt about the the owl bear was to me it was almost like Marvel's Hulk version or the D D version of Hulk, right? So uh. like Hulk Smash. Um, there were a couple of scenes in there, particularly toward the end, where the owl bear, owl bear literally gave me the Hulk vibe, right? Uh -huh. um, when it comes to the storyline, absolutely a great overarching story. I think how they filmed it and how they made it all happen was really not that great. A lot of people say the movie sucked. A lot of people say the movie's great. It really depends on what you think. I've heard both. Well, exactly. A lot of my so I like my big time adventure type movies to be a little nitty gritty. I don't like all this stay puff marshmallow man kind of got to please everybody. And we, we don't want to, show violence, blood, guts, and gore and stuff like that because of little kids or whatever the case may be. Few things, again, what I did, I want to talk about what I did like first. Hang on, wife. Okay. Um, wife's texting me. She's going to bed, so tell me what I need to do before I go to bed. Anyway, so the things that I did like, I thought the storyline itself was great had they implemented it better. But the story 
the backstory, the antagonists, everything was great. Um, the depiction of the druid, even though Wild Shape can't do Owlbear, whatever, I thought that portion of it was good. Um, the barbarian completely missed the mark on the barbarian. If she was supposed to be a, they say she was a barbarian, but just didn't, to me, didn't fit um, what a barbarian should be. Um, for me, who if you want to, what's that? Who was the, who was the actress that played the same chick that played the Valkyrie and Thor? Uh, wait, who played the barbarian chick? Yeah. Um, what's her name? She does, uh, she's the, the hot chick in, uh, Fast and Furious, the Hispanic girl. That's, uh, Dom's yeah. girlfriend, right? Yeah. She played the barbarian. She plays, she's a great actress. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But what I didn't like is there was no way to tell that she was a barbarian. To me, she was a really good fighter. That was it. She wow. was a straight fighter. If I wanted to see a barbarian, I want to see somebody go bloodthirsty, ballistic that won't stop. And somebody in the party would have had to stop her and say, hey, it's us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Getting yeah. that 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 rage. Right. So a barbarian is known for raging. There was no raging. Right. Or at least so, a berserker or a berserker. Right. So the only reason you knew that she was barbarian was because they said, oh, she came from so and so clan or whatever. Oh. Barbarian tribes. Woo. Okay. So to me, that was, that was a non-starter. The sorcerer to me, um, just when I think of a sorcerer, I think that a sorcerer is, um, to me, more of a dark kind of a soul, right? I don't want to say like, I almost, I, I always conflate warlocks and sorcerers a lot. Cause I know, you know, the warlocks can be a little more like devious evil and, you know, the old ones taking forth, right? But to me, a sorcerer, um, I just didn't like how they depicted the sorcerer. For example, a sorcerer, do they have speak with dead? Just asking. Do they have speak with dead? So. I don't know, right? Again, I don't know all the rules in 5e. I do, again, I play 5e a lot. I've been playing it for a while. But I, there's just so much to it that I just like, oh, my players should know their characters, right? If they tell me something, I have no reason to not believe them. But, I, you know, if I feel that it's wrong, I'll look it up and see. But to me, the sorcerer as well, um, I think it could have been done really well. It's sort of that character who doesn't believe in himself. And so because he doesn't believe in himself, his magic doesn't work the way it's supposed to and yada, yada. So I think they could have really done that. Um, but I just didn't like the implementation. That said. The staff that he got, the hither thither staff. That hey man, we'll see you later, GD. I appreciate it. The hither thither staff was really badass, and I'm gonna put that in my game, in my five E game somewhere. So there is um a spell, and I can never remember it, which really is kind of funny because one of my characters that I play in a play by post game is a sorcerer, and let me grab his his spell really quick, and so I can tell you. Uh, my characters. Where's my character? Breezy Vale. I have an Aragonese called Breezy Vale. Um, ah. and they call him Breezy Vale because nobody could pronounce his real name. <laughs> so you just call him Breezy. Um, let's see. Features and traits. Um, I wonder if I don't have, if I changed it. I may have changed it from his original. Uh, yeah, I think I changed it from, so the spell that, um, where you can open a portal like up to 500 yards away. So, and you can step through, right. So oh, you right. like, you open it where you're at and then it, as long as you can see where the other side is up to 500 feet or 500 yards or whatever, they have a staff that can do that. Thought that was wicked cool. I thought, um, how they used it, um, to gain entry where they wanted to go wicked cool right so there were some really cool elements to that aspect but i just think the sorcerer as a whole no bueno for me um i like the druid um even though the only thing it seemed the druid could do was do all of the uh um wild shape there was no bringing up plants or no using 
stuff like that. Like, Hey, I'm going to take, have the grass is going to come alive and it's going to wrap around your ankles and hold you. None of that. It was all wild shape. And she was a tiefling, right? Don't have a problem with tiefling. She had the little horns, but she had none of the other trademarks that I would think a tiefling. Tieflings are supposed to be devil oriented, right? And so there was no devil features on her outside the horns and a little bit of a pointy ear. She didn't have like the sharp teeth. She didn't have like the really dark face. You know what I mean? That real dark visage that I would um, come to think of a tiefling. Um, so yeah, so that was just like, okay, a tiefling druid. Okay. I can see it, but she's hot. There's <laughs> tieflings aren't hot. <laughs> tieflings aren't hot. So, I mean, they just left her face, put a little bit of makeup on her, did her ears a little, did her horns a little, and that was it. So the setting up of the characters was really, in my opinion, what did this movie in as far as the antagonist. Now the wicked witch of the West, if you want to call her that. She was what a sorcerer wizard should be. Um, and the last character that they had on, well, two really, but the one didn't count because he, he didn't really do anything. He was just, he went from being part of the team to being the bad guy overall. But um, oh. uh, Chris Pine's character is sort of like the group leader. Um, he played a lute and he sang songs, but that was the end of it. He did no bard stuff at all. Right, he was not the traditional sense of a bard. He was a he was a minstrel. To me, he was a rogue. A rogue that played lute. That was it. And even then, he didn't do anything roguish. He didn't pick locks. He didn't like sneak into places. He didn't climb walls. He did nothing that you would think the the traditional rogue. So if they want to do D and D, then they should have had their characters be closer to the archetypes that they were portraying from the game, right? Poetic license, sure. filmography, I get it all, but I just think they could have stuck a little tighter to people that are going, their target audience is guys like me and people that are getting into D&D from D&D 5e. They want to see their their characters kind of come to life on a big screen. Um, they had a dragon in there, the obligatory dragon, but I got to say, I was very, very happy with their depiction of the dragon because every dragon you ever see is a smog knockoff. Right. Right. This dragon was a big, huge, fat blob whose feet couldn't even touch the ground. And he had to slide <laughs> around that, everywhere. It yeah. was freaking awesome. It really <laughs> was. And and when he went to breathe fire, it didn't always work, which is the game mechanic in 5e where the dragon, you have to roll a certain die in order to have the breath weapon work for that round. Right. So they call it oh. a recharge. Right. So. The dragon breathes fire. Next time you have to roll a five or a six. If you get a five or a six, it means the breath weapon's recharged and it's available for the use again. So you kept watching this dragon trying to spit his fire, but it was just coming out little sparks <laughs> until the sorcerer, I call it the, the sorcerer's version of burning hands, but he flicked his finger up and had a flame come off his finger and they used his finger as a pilot light. <laughs> so the dragon's breath would, <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting take. So again, stuff like that I thought was kind of cool. Um, I like that they didn't make up an entire new world. They used the Forgotten Realms. Even though I'm not a Forgotten Realms guy, at least they used the known world. They used, right. they dropped names. Oh, we're going to Baldur's Gate. Oh, we're going to Neverwinter. Oh, we're going here, the Sword Coast. We're on the Sword Coast, right? So they're dropping a lot of those Forgotten Realms names that people are probably familiar with by now, especially if you've done nothing but 5e. Um, but again, I think the the overall antagonist in the story was really, really good. The Red Wizards of Thay are That's the... That's what I was going to ask. I heard they, they are the in. prime. They are the prime antagonist, even though the character that um, uh, Hugh, what's his name, uh, played, um, Hugh Grant, played the bad guy. He was like, he was part of the team, not sure what his skill was, um, but he's basically a con man. And he ended up um, partnering with the, the Wizards of Thay to become the mayor of Neverwinter. And his whole purpose was to rob the city blind and sneak off with their treasure and just let the Red Wizards of Thay have Neverwinter. 
And so, but the Red Wizards of Thay and their Thay Assassins, mm-hmm. wicked, wicked cool. Wicked cool folks. Um, and I think that if the entire story would have been the character party as hardcore and as as believable, I guess, as the Red Wizards of Thay, the girl was, it would have been a much different story when it comes to folks that like D&D and are into that, right? I just think that it they made it very Disney-esque to me, you know? Um, yeah. So it wasn't quite as that silly. Um, there was combat. There was, you know, a little bit of blood here and there. Um, I thought the, it, it really was funny when they were using the sorcerer had a cleric thing that allowed him to raise dead and, you know, or not raise, but speak with dead. Right. And so, right. but it's like, instead of one and done, it was like, they went through a, a half a dozen, um, dead, body. uh, <laughs> dead bodies trying to get answers. They were trying to find something that had been lost a hundred years ago. So they went to a battlefield where it was last seen and they're <laughs> digging up all the bodies and asking them. And I got to say another thing that is really cool, even though we know the game mechanic of magic, it only la you got, for example, if you in fifth edition, if you speak with dead, you get five questions and then the, the body goes back to whatever it was. Right. What the happens? Edition, I've got the spell myself and yeah. the scroll and you yeah. get uh, one turn. I think it's one turn, and you can have up to four questions for a level nine cleric. Right. So in this case, in fifth edition, when you speak with dead, you get five questions. That's it. Right. Now, that said, how long does a spell last? What happens if you don't ask any questions? Right. Eventually, right. the spell will wear out. Well, in this particular instance, the spell didn't, doesn't wear out. So if you don't ask your fifth question, the body's just sitting there waiting for you to ask his question. And at the end of the movie, they did a cut scene like this, this bodies there, this decaying corpse is sitting up saying, could somebody come and ask me another question? <laughs> you know, it's like, I want to go back to sleep. So again, injecting comedy into it, I get is, is all fun and games. It's not my, my style of what I want to see. I like, I like, I like the Lord of the Rings type of stuff, right? Where it's very yeah. overarching. There's a lot of nitty gritty stuff into it. And I really think they could have done that, but maybe they were just trying to get away from the Lord of the Rings type of a, a scenario, but I really think they could have done better. I really do. So um, I think from visualization standpoint, like they had a prison at the beginning of the movie, they had this prison scene, dude, man, I want to put that prison in my game. It was wow. like in the middle of freaking nowhere. It was like in the middle of a glacier. Um, prisoners came in, they, they shackled their hands and feet, and then they, sh- the shackle went down into this track and it locked it into a track. So as they're walking around, they got these tracks going everywhere when they first bring them in. Um, they had, um, wizards bracelets, which I thought were really cool when you wanted to prevent a wizard from being able to do their spells. They slap this wizards bracelet on it and it literally keeps their magic to themselves. They can't cast spells yeah. or do anything. That yeah. was kind of cool, I thought. Um, so there were a lot of good, like, Easter egg nuggets that I could use have in you, my game. Have you but, ever heard of uh, Dresden Files? No. It's a, He's supposedly a modern-day wizard, but there's some bad guys in it, and he's bad. It's a book series called The Dresden. Okay. okay. But anyway, cool. um, he's a modern-day wizard, lives in Chicago. He's like a warden type thing. Right. But um, he, anyway, uh, there's these manacles in it that are fey made, made by the fairies, and they're they're called spike. Basically, put them on wizard, stop them from being able to cast spells, which is cool, right? Because that's always a big thing in games, right? What happens if your magic user um, gets arrested? What do they do? They slap the manacles on them. Okay, poof, I missed the step. Poof, and the manacles, you know, they'll go with me. So crap like that. But but again, the movie is not for everybody. Um, it really depends on what you like. I think they tried their best to sort of stay, but I really think as much as I love the overarching story and I think what they really could have done with it, 
What I disliked the most was how they tried to Disneyfy Dungeons and Dragons, right? right? And they really did not do a good job, in my opinion, of highlighting the um the uh what's the word I'm looking at the archetype of the character class. Right? I think they could have done a lot better. I think they should have whoever said this is how we're gonna do the the Red Wizards of Thay keep doing that. Right. Um the girl that played the antagonist um from the Red Wizards uh, was a female. If you've ever if you have Netflix watch the series Shadow and Bone. Oh yeah uh, I have yeah, so the girl, did you see the whole first and second series? Yep. The girl that could, like, heal and do all the other stuff and change your face and, and all that stuff? Right, right, yeah. She plays the Wizard of Thay in the movie. Ah, okay. And she's bald and tattooed, and she is wicked bad. She is really good, right? Um, but mm. again, you know, they had the, the tidbits. I loved, <laughs> I loved the... Uh, um, gelatinous cube scene in there. I love the, uh, they had a displacer beast in there. They had our homage to our mimic for those that have never seen a mimic. Ooh, there he is. Oh, right, um, right. They had the homage to the mimic. So they had some, some definite keys in there. And there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of pretty cool things they came up with, but I think from a pure Dungeons and Dragons standpoint, it left me a little little lacking just because again i'm i'm one for let's make that a little nitty gritty you know don't be afraid to to show a little skin or go out there and, and show a little violence because D is a yeah. violent game but well, I, I think they're really trying to target the the audience that plays 5e now because that's look who's playing 5e those are the for the most part they're the younger kids. They're they're the you know, they're, they're everybody in the world wants everything to be soft and and cuddly and stuff like Fluffy, that. And it's really yeah. not. It's not everybody. Don't get me wrong. But if you're targeting eight, nine, ten year old kids, I can definitely see why they did the movie like this. But I would much rather see a heavy PG thirteen or a or even an R rated D and D movie than I would want to see like a PG or a G. Right? I don't want to see right. Disneyfied movies. Right? And I think he could do a lot with PG-13. I think they could have done a lot more, but that's just my uh, take. I saw a, a discussion with the actors in it, mm -hmm. and the chick that plays the barbarian, she was saying that the directors really referenced heavily Wizards of the Coast. Yep. And they talked to their executives. I yep. know the executives of Wizards of the Coast have been gearing towards younger audiences. Yep. So. And that was the other thing I saw some arguments that people didn't like was that um, they said that uh, when they did the credits, they said based on the Hasbro, the game by Hasbro, yeah. no yeah. reference to Gygax or TSR or anything like that in there. So the, exactly. some purists, and I think there are some purists yeah. that, that were it's upset wrong, about though. that. I mean, it really is wrong. You don't right. reference the creator of the game. Right, Dave Arneson, D D Gary Gygax, and all those guys, right? But yeah, um, I didn't even notice. Did they? Um, oh my God, I can. Why can I never remember freaking Elminster's real name? I call him Elminster all the time, and I've called him that for so long that I can never remember the guy that created. Oh, the guy that created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't Forgotten know Realms, and he's on J Stream all the time, man. I'm like, why can I not freaking remember Elminster? I just call him Elminster, but. I don't even know that they that they credit him because he created Forgotten Realms. How could you not credit the guy that created the setting that you guys are out there showing on? So, but it's that being said, probably that's probably yeah, it is. They don't want to give TSR the original TSR. Yeah, totally credit. get it, totally get it. But like I said, you know, um, I'm sure some people loved it um, from an entertainment standpoint. I thought it was good. I just think my my whole thing I keep coming back to is I just don't like how they depicted the character classes. I think they did them a serious injustice. I think um, the sorcerer could have been a little darker, a little little more to him than just uh, some guy that's trying to get in the tiefling's pants. You know, so. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, he's like this, supposed to be the super super stupid don't know what I'm doing with a uh, sorcerer but all of a sudden he counters a time stop spell he 
has reverse gravity. I'm like, dude, you can't. That's you that's don't, pretty powerful. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good stuff there, dude. You know, somebody cast time stop and time stop, and you're able to counter that. Like, that counter spell only work up to fourth level, or or is it? There's some other rules to it. Maybe it's if you're a, a certain level, you can match other levels. I forget, but counter spell is a pretty tough thing. But yeah, so that's just kind of my thoughts on that. Um, don't know what anybody else thinks about it, but that's just my thoughts. But that's okay. Um, in the meantime, I appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us. Um, it is getting to be 1130-ish. That's normally when we wrap up. And for those that have been following us all, you may have noticed I've kind of, instead of going to 1130 and then after party till midnight, I've gone the game till closer to 11 o'clock and then do the after party maybe till 1130, if even that. And that's because trying to accommodate some of our players that do have to get up early in the morning <laughs> and uh, go do their thing. I should be one of them, but you know, I'll, I'll take one for the team, but um, we are going to, uh, I'm going to try to find somebody that we can raid right now. Not a hundred percent sure if my raid's going to work um, nope. just because. Darling's up. Yeah. We got Darling, got Luke, got Cave Geeks, Lollygaggers. Um, so dang, Darling's got like 80 people. She must've got raided by somebody. Um, quests is up. Let me see some of these other ones we got. Uh, let's see. Who do we want to? What's she doing? Are, are you on? Can you pop over there and see what yeah, she's doing? Is, is, is she playing or is this her typical Monday? Yeah, um, I think it's her typical Monday where she's painting and yeah, painting and watching. Oh no, she's playing. playing. Oh yeah. All right, Ghost we're gonna salt marsh. Oh, nice. So let's pop over there and 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 see what they're doing. So we're going to. Head over to Darling Creep Show. For those that follow, you know that we we raid her a lot. It's like she's our go-to usually just because I love the stuff that she does. So we're going to pop over there. Hopefully you guys will, will be here, not this coming Friday, but next Friday as we return to stream. As a reminder, we are off Monday. Iger, thanks for hanging out with me. Everybody out there, I appreciate you listening to my ramblings on on the Dungeons & Dragons movie. Hopefully you'll uh, you go check it out and you'll enjoy it as much as we did. But until then, just remember, in a world that you can be anything you want, all we ask is that you be kind. See you next time. Yeah. Um, the one that just got absolutely messed up uh, is going to turn around and see uh, see what we can do about this scorpion. Uh, pincer one. All right, I'm out, bro. Right, see ya. Uh, Pincer 1 is a 